The main character soaked to the skin feels only hellish cold. She lies on the ground and cannot move in any way, hearing someone's strange voice. In front of her, she sees a boy with white hair who is so shocked by her condition that tears flow down his cheeks one after another. Despite the fact that the girl does not understand at all what is happening to her, she admires the eyes of the young man who is bending over her. A drop of the touched boy fell on the unfortunate woman's cheek, causing her to close her eyes. The lady doesn't understand why he's crying. Feeling tired, the heroine closed her eyes at the last moment, thinking about how warm she was. Suddenly, she regains consciousness and opens her eyes. But she is no longer on the street, but in a clean and comfortable room. The victim rises from the bed and grabs her head, and at that moment the servants pounced on her with questions about whether she had woken up. The maids called the girl calling her their highness, but the protagonist herself does not understand why they call her that, and whether they even address her. The baby wanted to look back, but her gaze falls on the mirror, where to her surprise she sees herself with a not quite familiar appearance. The lady has absolutely no idea why she looks like this, what happened to her and where she is. After a while, when the servant gave the medicine to the mistress, she closed her eyes because it was too bitter for her. But the subordinate explained that she needed to eat well in order to get well soon. Chewing the nasty pills, the girl thinks that she has already been in this palace for several days and takes this medicine during each of them. After talking with the people there, she realized that she was in the world of the novel The Beast and the Young Lady, which, by the way, is intended for adults. This work is a romantic fantasy about a fairy tale beauty and the monster Prince Blake who was cursed. This story also tells the story of Richard, a wild man who desperately fought for the love of Diana, the main character of the novel. The injured girl ended up in the body of Lady Ancia Diana's half-sister. Ancia married Crown Prince Blake as a child and became Crown Princess. But she was very shocked when she saw her fiancé's face, which he had been hiding under a mask all this time. When the wedding day arrived, she jumped into the lake trying to commit suicide. The incident greatly shocked Blake, who considered himself a monster, which is why he closed his heart from everyone. Having been rejected by Diana, darkness gradually consumed him. Lying on the bed, the heroine thinks that, according to the novel, when Ancia decides to drown herself, her fiancé will try to save her. But the girl understands that since she ended up in her body, it means she managed to survive. The little girl began to reason that the boy she had seen recently before losing consciousness was Mr. Blake. She guesses that if he hated her, he would not have cried so much and worried about her. But suddenly, the girl realized that she had been lying in bed for five whole days and was so tired of doing this that she couldn't even feel her legs. The lady remembered that the bride committed suicide after seeing Blake's face and saying that it scared her very much and it would be strange if the boy did not worry about it. It's probably hard for him right now. Ansia decided to get off the bed. The surprised maid asked the lady where she was going to, which she said that she wanted to see the crown prince. The servant warned the little girl that the master was very shocked by what happened to her, so she needed to be careful if she was going to see him. But she suddenly smiled sweetly and said that everything was fine, after which she asked her subordinate to take her to her fiancé. The maid immediately began to fulfill the crown princess's request. She escorted the child along the long corridor of the palace that led to Blake's mansion. The young lady, meanwhile, began to think that she was not going to leave her husband. In fact, this character in the novel was her favorite, and Diana chose Richard, thereby destroying her interest in this story. But the girl understands that now she can change the gloomy childhood of this boy, and she will in no case miss such a wonderful chance. The heroine recalls that besides Ancia had nowhere to go in the novel, she was the daughter of Count Belasian by his first wife, and her mother died in childbirth. Later, the Count found himself a new wife who gave birth to his second child, Diana, and then the first daughter became only a hindrance for the man and his wife. He, knowing that the crown prince was cursed and would not live long, gave Ansia to him as his wife, and she herself decided to die not only because of the appearance of her chosen one, despair and betrayal of the family weighed on her. The main character understands that in any case, even if she leaves here, she will have nowhere to go. Finding herself opposite the young master's door where the maid led her, the girl decided that she had no desire to leave Blake in despair. She calmly entered the room, said hello, and introduced herself to his highness. But then the lady saw something unusual. 
her husband sitting on the bed with his back to her and throwing a blanket over himself alarmedly ordered her not to approach him. When Ansia wanted to say something, her husband again persistently ordered her to move away, explaining that he was a freak and she would be very surprised when she saw him. Noticing how the young man was trembling with fear, the protagonist realized that he did not hate her but was simply afraid that she would be disgusted with him. The lady sighed tiredly, after which she walked closer to her groom and grabbed the edge of the blanket with her hand. Suddenly, she rips the fabric off the notorious boy, which plunges him into great shock. The white-haired crown prince with red eyes and a mask on one side of his face was so surprised by this that he could not find any words to describe his shock. Still, he buried his face in the pillow and offendedly asked his wife what she was doing here. Not wanting to show his face, he angrily shouted to the girl that she had in fact taken his blanket without his permission. Ansha smiled embarrassedly because she was stupefied by the fact that the main character of an adult novel mumbles so inappropriately. The protagonist has no idea where that gloomy Blake went because the boy she sees in front of her looks more like an innocent Snow White rabbit. But the lady understands that they still need to resolve this misunderstanding, so she tells her husband that she needs to tell him something important. Suddenly, she sat down on the crown prince's bed and confidently rips the mask off his face. The gentleman was very taken aback by such suddenness. He turned his head to the side in embarrassment when his wife reached out her palms to him, asking him not to look at him. But she did not obey his requests, and placing her hands on his cheeks, said that she considered him very handsome. Blake's face instantly flushed, but he was no longer as anxious as before. He asked the girl in surprise what she said. The lady admitted to the crown prince that she had never seen a man as handsome as him. After that, she smiled tenderly, which meant that her words were truly sincere. The girl removed her hands from the face of the gentleman who was still completely bewildered. The main character thought that her husband was probably not very comfortable with this curse on his face, but still, it did not look as terrible as he thought. Ansia thinks he is handsome. His left side of his body is covered in black markings, he has large red eyes, and although he is a guy, he has a beautiful nose lips and chin. The crown princess looked at every feature of the boy's appearance with admiration. She remembers that his curse will subside when he meets Diana. Blake's cheeks turned red when his wife told him that his face could be described as the most beautiful in the world, even in his present state. But the young man turned away embarrassedly and said that she in fact hated him. In response to this, the lady suddenly said that she did not hate him at all as he thought. She decided to admit to him that she had not tried to commit suicide at all, but had accidentally fallen into the lake. But unfortunately, what the girl says is a lie. Antia really planned suicide, but now that the heroine is in her body, she will give it all off as an accident, because she herself would not have done that. The young ruler stared at the protagonist in surprise and asked if she really wasn't angry with him. The lady answered yes. She says that she heard that he saved her when she was drowning, so she wanted to express her gratitude to him. Blake was even more surprised when the lady said this. He asked her again in bewilderment. She repeated that he saved her life and she of course is very grateful to him for that. The young master's reaction is very unpredictable. The crown prince burst into tears like a one-year-old child. Wiping away the streaming tears, he says in a trembling voice that he thought she was trying to commit suicide. Ansha grinned cheerfully and asked why she needed to do this because she married such a wonderful man like him. Without ceasing to rub his eyes, the child said that he saved her, but after that, he thought that she would not like it and she would hate him because of it. The main character guessed that this was exactly what he was thinking about all these five days while she was unconscious. Having hugged her husband, she said that this is not so and she really likes him so he does not need to worry about this. Hugging the heroine back, Blake shyly said that he liked her too. The protagonist smiled imperceptibly and thought what a liar he is, because according to the plot of the novel, he likes her younger sister Diana. Without letting go of the groom, the lady thinks that in the novel, the emperor knew that Blake liked Diana and asked the count to marry them. Of course, the count sent an invitation from Anzia and a refusal from Diana. The girl smiled and sighed, because it turns out that the boy lied for the greater good. Suddenly releasing the crown prince, she asked him if they could sleep together tonight. He, blushing like a tomato, abruptly moved away from his wife, even opening his mouth in surprise. The heroine fell into a stupor because she did not understand what she said wrong. The lady has no idea why he reacts this way if he is the main character of the novel. Countess Belasian has light magic, and Diana inherited it she will be able to lift the curse from the crown prince. 
Antia is also a member of the Belasian family, and she too should have inherited this ability, even if she did not excel in magic. Blake's curse is not limited to just the mark. It grows throughout his entire body causing endless pain accompanied by a cold sensation in his body. The protagonist suggests that with this problem, it must have been difficult for him to jump into the already cold water in the lake after her. The lady thinks that on the other hand, he never told her how hard it was for him or that he was sick. She understands that he hates himself so much. The girl is aware that physical contact is necessary to use the light magic of the Belasian family. Then, Ansia smiled slyly and thought that this novel comes with a 19-plus label which means something more can be done than simple touches. Blushing shyly, Blake told his wife that they couldn't sleep together at such a young age, so they would just hold hands. The heroine was surprised at how much she embarrassed him. The young lady explained that everything was fine because they were already married and for them sleeping together is normal and there is no need to be afraid of it. But the boy burying his face in the pillow admitted that he was very shy. Ancha was very amazed at where her wild Blake went from the original because the one here looks more like a cute red-eyed rabbit. Looking at her embarrassed husband, she thought about how this 10-year-old rabbit could turn into an animal like the wolf he was in history. The little girl suggested that growing up is full of all sorts of secrets and mysteries, but in any case, she cannot leave it just like that. The crown princess snatched the pillow from her husband's hands, after which she persistently asked him to come closer. Taking him by the hands, she declared that they were now a couple, and from now on they should sleep together every day. The young man became even more shy. She, seeing his reaction, asked if everything was okay, to which the gentleman replied that since she didn't mind, then so did he. Blake asked if she would change her mind to which the main character said no because she really liked him. These words discouraged the boy so much that he blushed even more so much so that steam seemed to be emanating from him. Crossing her fingers with her husband's, the young lady asked how he felt whether he was comfortable or pleased. She asks him about this in order to find out if he can feel the effects of her light magic on his fingertips. The crown prince hesitated to answer because he was still too uncomfortable with her touch. Mrs. Belasian continued to hold his hands thinking that since everything was happening like in the novel, she wanted to help Blake live a happy life. But she was not sure that he would notice her strength. In the end, the girl decided that she was simply obsessed with this novel. She wanted to help the young master who would remain in torment all his life. She rose from the bed and let go of the silent boy's hands believing that she would not succeed. But he suddenly grabbed her by the shoulders and poked his face into her back, making it clear that he did not want her to leave. Blake admitted in a trembling voice that her fingers were very warm and then asked her not to leave him. The princess was taken by surprise that such a small thing would make him so worried. She said she wasn't really going anywhere. Mrs. Belasian explained that she was only taking his blanket which made him a little confused and puzzled. The kid, burning with shame that he had come up with a problem for himself and even hugged the girl silently, moved away from his wife. She looked at him in bewilderment and wondered what he had imagined when he hugged her. She, with the same amount of positivity, asked her husband if he liked sleeping with her. The young man replied that this is not the point at all, but whether she is against it and whether it is disgusting for her to sleep with such a monster like him. The main character was very outraged that the gentleman dared to call himself that. She said that he shouldn't talk about himself like that, and he's not a monster. It seems that the boy felt a little better from her support, but he continued to sit in a constrained position because he was still not sure about this. The lady grabbing Blake's hands repeated that there was no doubt that he was beautiful and did not look like a monster at all. The girl added that moreover his curse would soon dissipate without leaving a single trace behind. She explained to her husband that as soon as he turned 18, the curse on his skin would disappear and he would live a happy life. The protagonist asks the crown prince not to give up and not pay attention to the words of others. The young master lowered his head thoughtfully. He was interested in the words of his beloved. The Belasian family passes on their light magic, while the imperial family passes on their curse. Philip, the founder of the empire, had a relationship with the goddess of light. The goddess gave him her powers, but he used them to found his empire. Soon, the emperor betrayed his beloved and found himself another woman. Having learned this, the goddess was beside herself with rage and sent a curse on Philip. It covers the body of any heir with black patterns that will remain on the skin forever until death.
all the cursed children of the ruler die before they even reach adulthood. The heroine thought that on the night when Blake turns 18, he will plunge into the very depths of the abyss. But when he meets Diana, the curse will subside. Anchia, taking her husband by the hands, assured him swearing on her life that the curse would not be with him forever. He suddenly leaned back from the girl and exclaimed that she shouldn't say that, because even if he dies, she definitely needs to live her life. The crown princess, touching his palms again, repeated that neither she nor he would die, so he did not need to worry about it. The boy was so touched by her words that he could not hold back the tears that rolled down his cheeks. The young lady, wiping his eyes with a handkerchief, jokingly says that her husband turns out to be a crybaby. But he, without ceasing to sob, said that this is not so. She continued to insist that he was a crybaby, and the young heir denied it, not even noticing that he was starting to cry even more. Ancia patted her husband on the back and finally agreed with him, asking him to calm down. Saying that everything was fine, the crown princess laid the sleepy Blake on the bed so that he could finally fall asleep. Several hours passed, and the protagonist, who also slept for a while, woke up and opened her eyes. In front of her, she saw the crown prince, who was still in his dreams. Madame thought he was very cute, then realized that they had been holding hands all night. The lady wanted to pat her rabbit on the head, but it immediately woke up. Blake smiled sweetly when he saw Ancia. She was surprised by this and asked why he was laughing, to which the young man replied that she liked her. This put the girl in a stupor, and His Highness smiling even brighter thanked her for supporting him. The little girl blushed and was embarrassed to answer him, but she thought that she wanted to make him laugh and be happy more. The main character stayed with Blake for several days, and while with him, noticed that he never leaves his room, but only in extreme cases. Whether it's banal reading books or eating, he does everything in his room. And when they ate together every day, the girl noticed one strange detail. And today, at another lunch, she noticed it too. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they are brought only salads consisting of only vegetables. Ansha was already seriously thinking about whether her husband was really a rabbit. Raising a spoonful of the disgusting-smelling broth to her lips, she noticed that the dishes were the same every day. The soup they were brought had already been served yesterday. The lady decided to ask the gentleman what he liked about food, and he, after thinking a little, said that he liked everything. Then the princess asked him if he liked fish and meat, and the boy happily replied that he did. The protagonist realized that her husband is not a fan of just vegetables. She assumed that he was fed only greens every day, because he was cursed, because that was the only reason that came to her mind. Anchia decided that it was very rude to treat him like that, and apparently the servants thought that everything was in order, because she and Blake were still too young to contradict them. The girl also remembers that responsibility for the crown prince's palace lies with the eldest son of the Hamill family. His Highness, noticing that his wife had stopped eating and was deep in thought over something, asked if everything was all right and if she liked her dish. She laughed as if nothing had happened and then said that everything was normal. Thinking that she didn't want Blake to worry, now the main character called the maid who stood quietly near the door. Hearing that the mistress wanted to tell her something, Melissa bowed her head and prepared to listen to her. The princess asked her to call the head butler after their meal because she wanted to check something. The subordinate bowed and obeyed the lady, saying that she would fulfill her request. After this, the protagonist turned to her husband and invited him to try some fried mushrooms, but he stated that he did not like them. However, the girl said that he needed at least some variety in food besides vegetables. She managed to persuade the boy, and he decided to try a piece of fried mushroom. Feeling this pleasant taste, the crown prince smiled and clenched his fists, and the girl reminded him to chew his food more thoroughly and not swallow right away. But the young man still smiled sweetly and swallowed the piece because he really liked the mushroom. The young master, touching his wife's hand, said that she felt warm and he felt better when he held them. The main character was already happy in her thoughts because he seemed to feel her magic of warmth. But she showed her husband a modest reaction where she smiled and said that she was glad to hear it. Then the girl asked him to quickly finish his meal and go to bed. Looking at her hand, Ansha wondered if Blake felt better when he touched it, and if that meant there were bits of light in it. Some time later, when the crown princess was informed that the head butler had arrived, she ordered him to be led into the room. A thin, aged man entered the hall, the eldest son of the Hummel family, who asked Her Highness what had happened. The heroine sitting on the throne thinks that he never visited her when she was sick, 
and even if he becomes the head of a noble family in the future, he should not forget that she is still his princess. She asked the man if it seemed to him that His Majesty's diet was too meager. He adjusting his glasses seemed disappointed when he heard why she called him to her, because he says that he thought something urgent had happened. The lady asked if this did not mean that the fortune of the heir to the empire was not at all an urgent matter for him, as he said. Mr. Hummel started talking about the fact that Ansia came to the palace quite recently and still doesn't know much. The funds allocated to Blake are too small. The gentleman, in an insolent tone, asks the girl how she will order them to be if the emperor himself does not provide enough funds for his heir. The protagonist noticed that the head butler swallows saliva when he lies so she dares to assume something. Thinking that there may not be enough money for luxury, but it should not be so little that meat is not included in the diet, she answered with a simple, I see. The man, when he heard such an easy agreement from the lady, admitted that he thought that she was too young to understand him, but it seems that he was mistaken. But suddenly, Her Highness announced that she was dismissing him. The butler was so shocked by her verdict that he shuddered and could barely stand on his feet. Gritting his teeth in anger, he asked the little girl to repeat what she said. Turning to the guard who was standing nearby, the lady ordered him to put Mr. Hummel in prison for embezzling the crown prince's funds and refusing to confess to his crime. The subordinate had already approached the man, but the latter suddenly furiously asked the princess if she even knew the meaning of the words she was saying. The young lady replied that she knew very well, and added that she even knew where he spent other people's money. The impudent man was infuriated by her expressions even more. He shouted to the lady that she immediately imagined herself to be in charge when she married the damned prince. She shook her head and said that he certainly shouldn't have insulted his majesty, so he should be immediately put in prison. The subordinate bowed before the crown princess and said that her order would be carried out. The subordinate took the impudent butler out of the hall, although he did not stop loudly indignant. Once the head butler was put behind bars, all the other servants in the palace were scared and the atmosphere around them became tense. But instead of resolving the situation, the main character decided to fire many people for which she even made a whole list. In fact, when Blake was chosen second to inherit many servants betrayed him and sided with Richard the protagonist in the original story. Ansia understands that there should be no traitors near her husband. However, looking more closely at the names on the list, she threw the papers away and declared that all workers must leave her palace. After some time, due to the fact that the girl kicked out everyone who betrayed her husband in the novel, the castle became very deserted and quiet. Then a maid approached the lady and politely reminded her that all the servants were chosen by the emperor himself, and then asked if this was a good idea. Looking into the girl's face, the protagonist noticed that Melissa was worried about something. Smiling tenderly, the young lady said that everything was fine and she shouldn't worry so much. She agreed with her, then asked what his highness preferred for lunch. The little girl suddenly remembered that they had no cooks left at all because she had fired everyone. Suddenly, she asking Melissa not to worry about such trifles declared that now she would speak for him. The maid was very surprised by this, so she asked the girl if she had gone crazy, but she answered that she had and asked what was wrong with it. With a beaming smile on her face, Antia admitted to the servant that when she was exploring the palace, she found something very interesting and wanted to show it to her. Arriving at some door, the heroine immediately began to open it, and the servant could not recover from the fact that Her Highness herself had brought her here. The princess, meanwhile, managed to open the doors behind which was what she wanted to show. There, among all sorts of food, lay two jugs. Melissa was surprised at first, but then asked the lady what it was. The child opening the lid of the container asked her to take a closer look and figure it out. Inside was a certain red substance that looked and smelled appetizing. With a big smile, Ansia said it was soy sauce and red pepper paste. The girl was surprised by this, but she asked the little girl in bewilderment what kind of dishes they were. She replied that these are ordinary products from distant countries, but when added to food, they make the taste richer and more intense. Melissa exclaimed in admiration that Her Highness was indeed very smart, then asked how she knew all this. The heroine scratched her cheek in embarrassment and said that she read a lot of books about the culture of the East when she was little. But in fact, she lied, and this knowledge remained from her previous life in Asia. Looking at the spices, the servant admits that she heard that many products were bought from different countries, but she did not think that they would be stored like this. The protagonist thought furiously that this was the whole point. 
She could not believe that the cooks kept all this stuff in this form. But suddenly, she cheerfully rolling up her sleeves to start cooking as quickly as possible, thought about where she should start. Ansia, despite being a princess, took on the task of preparing dinner using oriental spices. And surprisingly, she did very well. The maid, seeing the mistress's innate talent for cooking and thinking that she was probably a culinary genius, covered her mouth with her hand in delight. But the girl only laughed modestly, because she has such skills thanks to years of cooking at home. The talented cook suggested setting the table for his majesty as quickly as possible. She prepared aromatic soup meat and white rice for him. The boy seeing this expressed his admiration, but asked what kind of dishes they were. His wife informed him that this was food from eastern countries. Smiling broadly, Ansia added that she looked them up in a recipe book, and since the kitchen had the necessary ingredients, she decided to cook them. The young master asked if it turned out that she herself prepared dinner for him, to which she said that it was so. Blake was amazed by this, but then he, with the same imperturbable face, asked his wife how to properly eat these delicacies. The heroine thought that it seemed like he was seeing such food for the first time. The lady asked him if he was familiar with Oriental cuisine, but then admitted that she herself had recently learned about it. Piercing the fried meat on a fork, Ansia explained to the young man that these were meatballs, the minced meat of which was brought from a good country. The princess said that these meatballs were very tasty, and she prepared them especially for him. He, having heard the latter, said that it was very confusing. But the main character said that there was nothing to be embarrassed about, after which, putting a little rice on the cutlet, she held out a spoon to the gentleman's mouth so that he could taste it. Blake was very delighted with the dish. He cheerfully exclaimed that it was very tasty. The baby liked the compliments and asked her husband to try another soybean paste stew, but this time she would not feed him herself. She warned that it had a rather specific taste, so if he didn't like it, he shouldn't force himself to continue eating it. The crown princess wondered whether her husband would like this dish, because even though she prepared it according to the recipe, the taste of this stew is still not for everyone. But the young gentleman unexpectedly declared that he really liked this taste, and moreover the oriental stew was the best he had ever eaten. Antia laughed and said that in this case she would cook for him more often. Then she thought that she seemed to be enjoying herself more as a child than as his wife, but even so, she was very happy now. Looking at the joyful Blake, the lady thought that if he wants to get rid of the curse, he must fall in love with Diana. This doesn't upset her, because since her husband is happy, she will simply always be by his side. The protagonist thinks that she needs to do everything before he comes of age. She knows that she will protect her husband until he meets Diana. In total, her husband will have three troubles during his childhood, the first is that he inherited a curse. The second is that Antia tried to commit suicide on the first day of their marriage. And the last thing that awaits Blake is the death of his father, Emperor Tenstion. After this, Richard's father, the crown prince's uncle, will become the new ruler. He will take the throne of his cursed and helpless nephew, and he himself will be sent to a cold southern island where he will have a difficult childhood. Continuing to eat dinner calmly, the girl thinks that the heir who inherited the curse will experience all these torments before he gets rid of it. Touching the cutlery thoughtfully, the lady remembered that her husband's father had not died yet, which means there was still time and she could help him. She also remembered that after their wedding, the emperor left the prince's palace, and then all that remained was to wait for his return. After a while walking on the street, the girl realizes that his highness really liked oriental cuisine, although she would not say that the food prepared for her was very tasty. However, recalling how the boy ate the dishes with pleasure, she admits that he clearly liked the food. Antia clenched her fists and decided that next time she should cook an even better meal. But for this, she needed a fryer. It can also be made in the time in which the main character lives. If you draw a sketch of it and show it to the blacksmith, he can easily make it. The lady liked this idea, so she hurried outside to find a suitable blacksmith. But suddenly, a certain detail made her stop. She sat down near the fence and began to examine a certain place, wanting to change something in it. However, suddenly, a man wearing expensive black shoes appeared behind the baby and asked her what she was doing here. Anxia was so frightened by his unexpected appearance that she turned around sharply and screamed. In front of her, she saw a handsome boy with black hair and red eyes. He extended his hand to her and apologized for frightening her so much. She stared in amazement at the new man not uttering a word out of shock. 
The protagonist looking at the guy's black, thick eyebrows, his sharp chin, the scar on his neck, and his animal-like red eyes realized that in front of her was Richard, the main character of the novel. The young man smiled at his friend and cheerfully told her that they had not seen each other for a long time. The girl remembers that he is the second son of the emperor's brother, Count Casel. Because the first son Blake was born cursed, he was chosen as heir. Richard himself has no right to the throne since his mother was a slave. But overcome by a thirst for power, he will kill all his enemies and become emperor. Lady knows that at the end of the novel, he is using Diana to free Blake from his curse. She decided that she would not allow the death of the emperor and the expulsion of her husband. The heroine calmly asked the arriving guest for what purpose he approached her. The young man said that since her marriage there had been too much noise in the palace, and he had heard that she had fired almost all of her staff. Anchia assumed that he decided to come and check the situation himself, since among her subordinates whom she fired was his spy. The little girl asked what was wrong with that, but Richard said that she had never acted so rashly before. The lady asked him again in bewilderment. He explained that the Marquis of Hamel and his family were personally chosen by the Emperor, and she simply took him, and without any further discussion took him into custody. The gentleman added that His Majesty personally selected all the servants, and no one gave her the right to dismiss them so easily. The main character clenched her jaw in anger. She is annoyed that Richard knows that all the servants were his spies, but nevertheless he points it out to her. But the next moment, she indifferently asked him whether he often kept people close to him whom he did not trust at all. The boy, smiling strangely, asked if she had tried to show generosity when talking with her subordinates, because by firing them, she would not gain their trust, because neither she nor they trust each other. The protagonist frowned and said that it was uncivil to poke your nose into other people's affairs. She tells the gentleman that this is none of his concern and he should leave. But Richard, suddenly folding his arms on his chest and tilting his head to the side in bewilderment, asked his friend if she was offended by him. She did not understand his words, and the heir again asked if she was offended by him for refusing her then. While the lady was completely confused, the young man reminded her that she was in love with him. He asks for forgiveness for refusing her. The boy says that he is the child of a slave, but asks his friend if she wants him to violate the emperor's orders and accept her. Ansia smiled but inside she was burning with anger because she couldn't bear to listen to how this turkey talked to the girl who fell in love with him. But the guy's next words infuriated the heroine even more. He asked with a smile if she knew how he felt because she liked him. Suppressing her rage inside the princess calmly asked the heir if he was disappointed that no one loved him. The girl's sudden question confused him and the little girl continued to repeat that he was terrible as a person. She angrily asked how he could say such things to the crown princess and whether he was trying to insult the imperial family in this way. Richard, wanting to touch his friend's hand, reached out to her simultaneously asking her why she was so angry. But suddenly, Blake, who suddenly appeared, grabs his hand, causing the girl to even scream. A white-haired boy with a menacing expression on his face told his brother that his wife did not like him. He embarrassedly said that he must have misunderstood something because Lady Belasian and he were just acquaintances, but the young man maliciously hinted to him to shut up. Blake told Richard that Anchia was no longer a lady, but was already the crown princess. The imperial heir, lowering his head, asked his brother for forgiveness and admitted that he had accidentally misspoke. Blake asked him to watch his language, and if he ever disrespected the princess one more time, he wouldn't get away with it. Then the boy, boldly throwing the hand of the future ruler, ordered him to get out of his sight. Richard had no choice but to leave the crown prince's palace, irritably clenching his fists and grinding his teeth. The husband of the main character, seeing his wife mysteriously looking at the back of the leaving young man, touched her hand and asked her to take her eyes off him. When the girl asked him what was the matter, he once again pitifully asked her not to look in the direction of other men. The lady smiled, took his hand, and said that she had no intention of doing this. She added that, compared to other boys, Richard is like a dog. Ancia flared up with rage and started talking about how that scoundrel had completely lost his fear, because he said that she seemed to be in love with him. The crown prince decided to ask if she really didn't like him, because Richard is a very famous person. She got even more angry and said that she didn't even like his way of speaking, 
but in general he was disgusting to her and she didn't trust him. But the princess calmed down and with a smile told her husband that she liked cute rabbits like him. The boy was so moved by this that he began to cheerfully rub his cheek against his wife's palm, giggling joyfully. The main character liked it because her anger instantly went away and she felt better. Suddenly, the protagonist asked Blake what kind of girls he liked, and he immediately replied that he liked Antia. But the lady said that she meant his type. But the young master again replied that he liked girls like her, after which he threw himself into his arms. The crown princess, smiling and blushing slightly, told her husband that she too loved only him. Some time passes, and the young lady having filled the bath put her hand in the water. After making sure that the temperature was acceptable, she decided it was time to carry out what she had in mind. Having opened the curtain, the girl turned to Blake, who was reading a book at the time. The young man joyfully asked what she wanted to tell him. Unexpectedly, Ansia announced that starting today she would wash him. He, shuddering on the spot and bursting into cold sweat, asked his wife what she just said. Still turning away embarrassedly, he mumbled that he would go wash a little later. But the main character grabbing her husband by the shoulders urgently asked him to go to the bathroom. The crown prince suddenly screamed and asked in horror what would happen if she also became infected with the curse from him. Ansia assured that she would not become infected, but he said that then failures would haunt her forever. If someone sees or touches Blake's curse, the goddess of light either bestows it on that person or curses him to eternal failure. Because of these false rumors, his highness cannot leave the palace and will be exiled to the southern island. Under the pretext of a curse, he will be removed from the position of crown prince and sent there. But thanks to the efforts of the former emperor, he will live in the palace there. The girl said that these were false rumors. But the gentleman said that it was not yet clear whether they were false to which the lady objected, that she had already touched his skin. This did not reassure the young man, and he said that she touched him but only a little and not all over his body. The little girl wanted to take her husband's hand and calm him down, but he sharply pulled his hand away and shouted in irritation that he was simply disgusting. The unfortunate heir fell to the floor covering his face with his hand, saying that if she saw his skin, she would hate him. The heroine looking at the crying prince thinks that the rumors are just excuses for him, and in fact, he just doesn't want to show her his body. Not understanding what she had done wrong, Ansia asked her husband to raise his eyes to her, which he did, albeit reluctantly. The protagonist squatting down next to the boy told him that as she had said before for her, he was not a monster at all. Gently touching his cheek, she added that she did not hate him at all and touching him would not make her life worse. The girl admitted to Blake that she was happy from the moment she married him. The crown prince blushing on his cheeks asked in surprise if she was really happy. She smiled and replied that yes, and she was infinitely glad that he became her husband. The young master felt much better. He said that he was also glad that he married her. After this, the main character and her husband hugged warmly. Without letting go of her beloved Ansia asked him to no longer call himself a monster and lower his self-esteem to which he agreed. Then the mistress asked him to go to the bathroom since he had already calmed down. But the boy suddenly turned red again. The princess asked him what happened and why he fell silent so abruptly because everything would be fine with her. The heir, embarrassedly looking away, admitted that he was embarrassed to do this. She reacted as if it was some kind of trifle that only made her laugh. She said it was very nice, but the prince asked her to stop. Mrs. Belasian, covering her smile with her hand, admitted that he just looked very nice, and this was not a joke, and the young man irritably asked why she was laughing. Suddenly, the heroine asked why he was embarrassed with her now, if he behaved normally with the servants to which the boy said that she was not them. Then the young lady asked if he was against her, to which he said that in no case. The princess smiled and, taking the boy by the hand, said that in that case she would ask him to go with her to the bathroom. The young heir did not resist and agreed to carry out bathing procedures. Finding himself in the bathroom and preparing to take off his outer layer of clothing, the crown prince suddenly turned to his wife and urgently asked her not to be surprised. She frowned and said that he had promised her that he would stop saying such things. The gentleman wanted to object again, but the girl said that if he said something like that again, she would definitely get angry, and it was better for him to stop. Suddenly, his highness, as if worried about something, asked his wife not to leave him. The heroine was so surprised that she fell silent. The protagonist recalls that in the novel Before Blake Grows Up, Ansia will leave him because only Diana can free him from the curse. 
Looking at the upset heir, she also remembers that her role according to the original is his care and guardianship, but she does not know when the moment she is thinking about will come. How did the little boy ask his beloved why she suddenly fell silent? Letting tears run down his cheek, the boy pitifully asked his wife if she wanted to leave him. She immediately replied that no and did not know why she should leave her husband, who so surprisingly looked like a white rabbit. But at the same time, she clenched her fist because everything she told his highness was a lie that she had to tell for his own good. The young man still crying asked if it was true to which the lady rubbing his tears replied that, yes, because now her home is here. Then the girl invited the young master to go to the bathroom before he changed his mind. Blake met his wife halfway and began to take off his shirt from his body, under which his dark patterns on his skin were already visible. When he completely exposed his torso, the protagonist could see the effects of the curse where the entire left side of his body was covered in black lines. A few hours ago, Richard, while in his office, was thinking that there was not a single spy left near the crown prince. Ansia had fired everyone. Count Castle and his half-brother are furious they don't like that some ten-year-old girl has caused them so much trouble. Even the maid who was preparing the bath for the master also got it. However, the crown emperor realizes that he has one trump card left, the crown princess Blake's wife. The young master remembers that this lady liked him. Every time this unfortunate girl looked at him furtively, trying to hide her feelings. For Richard, she was easy to seduce. He thinks that if he makes Ansia his puppet, it will bring more benefit than all his spies. The prince frowned slyly and decided that he would immediately go to the crown prince's palace for this purpose, after which he ordered the servants to prepare the carriage. But when he arrived, the heroine suddenly sternly asked him to behave respectfully because she is the crown princess, and telling her such things is rudeness. At that moment, Richard, who expected to see a fool deeply in love with him, was very surprised and realized that his plan had completely failed. But what struck him even more, the crown prince himself had also changed because he had never been so rude. Now drinking tea at the office table, the heir to the throne realizes that something went wrong because this monster was supposed to shock his wife with his body. The cup of tea showed the ominous smile of the young man who decided that he now wanted to take possession of Ansia. When Blake appeared in front of the main character without outerwear, the girl understood that she did not need to show it now so as not to upset him. The crown prince, seeing that his wife suddenly fell silent while looking at him, reached out with his hand towards her. But the young lady beat him to it, taking his hand first to show her support. She told her husband that he was very thin, then suggested that he go to the bathroom, otherwise he would catch a cold at this rate. He agreed with her. While the young gentleman sat in the warm water, his wife washed his body with a white washcloth. The little girl thought about the fact that marks from the curse cover half of his highness's body, but he is only eight years old. She recalls hearing that when the marks spread across the skin, they cause unbearable pain. She has no idea what Blake has to endure. With these thoughts, Ansia touched her fingers to the skin affected by the curse. But the young master, blushing slightly, asked her to stop doing this because she might get infected by it. She answered irritably that this would not happen, and warned that if he talked about such nonsense again, she would definitely get angry. Continuing bathing, the protagonist began to sing a song about how she has healing hands and her hubby has a bulging tummy. But Blake didn't like it, and blushing with anger, he turned to the surprised girl and said that he didn't have any belly. The lady continued to insist that his stomach was still sticking out, but he embarrassedly said that it was all because he had eaten a lot today. The princess said that his belly was cute, but the young master turned away from her and said that in that case, he would not eat anything at all. The heroine objected that in this case he would remain so small, to which the boy said in fear that this was not very good. Antia smiled, and patting her husband on the head said that he did not have any belly, and she was just joking. She asks him to continue eating. Blake was delighted and promised that he would eat well and eat a lot in order to grow up quickly. The crown princess also grinned and wished her husband to grow up healthy to which he agreed, and stated that he would soon become taller than her. After some time, the main character learns that she received a certain gift from Richard, to which he also included a letter of apology. Having opened the envelope, the girl found out that he really apologized to her for what happened recently. Ansia has no idea what this young man is doing, but assumes that she seems useful to him, and he is trying to seduce her and then force her to spy on the crown prince. The lady does not know what to do because she politely refused, but the prince seems to have completely lost his mind. 
Still, she asks the servant to send the gift back. The maid understood her mistress's order, but asked whether it would be better not to simply reject Richard's letter. She waved her hand and asked her not to worry about this, and to send the letter back too because the young heir was not so stupid and would understand everything. The subordinate nodded humbly and said that she would carry out her order as she wanted. The young princess fell silent, hoping in her thoughts that the crown emperor would understand her and stop trying to give her something. But the next day, something completely different from what she wanted happened. The servant said that this time Sir Richard had also sent her a gift. The next day, the same thing happened. The prince again sent the crown princess a gift along with a letter and several red roses. On the third day, no change. Today, the boy also sent her a large box with a gift, but the lady ordered it to be sent back this time too. On the fourth day, a servant named Hans bowing before Antia wanted to tell her again that Richard had sent her another gift. But the girl said that he did not need to tell her about this every time, but just needed to send back everything that the prince did not send. He agreed with the lady's decision, but decided to say that this time the gentleman had sent an unusual thing, but a very valuable treasure. It turns out to be a very elegant small jewelry box with a stunning ring inside made from a mermaid's breathstone. The main character was in complete shock. She remembers that in the novel, everyone praised the ring for its beauty, but the little girl wants to know what Richard is up to. Mermaid's breath is a mana stone that has concentrated the power of the sea itself. There is no greater treasure in the world. In the original story, the heir to the throne gave it to Diana. The crown princess has no idea why the young master suddenly decided to give this jewel to her and whether he really wants to make her his spy. She told the servant that she did not need it. And even if Richard gave her a whole mine of monostones, she would not accept it. Then Ansia decisively asked Hans to tell her boyfriend not to send her anything else. The next day, the heroine walking along the city streets tells her subordinates, Melissa and Aiden, to quickly catch up with her because they are almost there. The girl and the guard barely had time to follow the mistress, so the first one asked her not to rush so much. But she didn't seem to hear them, because she walked so quickly, because she was very worried, because for the first time in a long time, she went somewhere outside the palace. Soon, the guard, the maid, and the crown princess arrived at a large two-story building. The protagonist is all in anticipation so much so that her eyes are sparkling, because she will soon finally have a cauldron for cooking on the fire. Having shown the blacksmith her drawing of a saucepan, the girl asked him if he could make something similar to this. The man first thought a little, after which he will try very hard to do it, because there is nothing that he cannot do. Ansia was very happy about this, and she told the master that she was counting on him very much, and he added that he would not let her down under any circumstances. After talking with the blacksmith, the young lady and her subordinates went back outside. Melissa smilingly asked the princess if she wanted to go somewhere else, but she replied that no and decided that they would now return to the palace. The trio immediately began to walk to the carriage, and the girl thought that she needed to return because Blake was waiting for her. She would be embarrassed to say this out loud. The baby arrived at her palace in the evening when the sky turned bright orange. She was just walking along the corridors of the house when suddenly she heard someone calling out to her cheerfully nearby. A moment later, Blake ran into her arms very happy to see her. He greeted his wife and asked if she had a good walk. She, with a slight blush on her cheeks, replied that yes, and she had a lot of fun. His Majesty then asked if nothing had happened to her, to which the young lady said that everything had gone well. Ansia asked if he was worried about her, and the boy said yes because she came later than she promised. The main character smiled sweetly and thought that she was still glad that she returned from her walk to the palace so early. The girl carefully removing the mask from her husband suggested that he walk around a little without it because it would be much better for him. He, a little embarrassed, agreed with her, but told Ansier that she was always trying to remove the mask from his face. The protagonist fell silent and fell into a stupor because the main character of a novel for adults was saying such ambiguous things. She smiled and gently touching her lover's cheek replied that it was because she liked to see her husband's happy face. The young master was delighted and said that he was also glad to see her happy. The princess asked him not to wear a mask while he was near her, to which the boy cheerfully agreed. The main character thought that Blake seemed to miss her more than usual. Based on this, the young lady decided to ask him what happened while she was away. He first replied that it was nothing but then admitted that he was scared when she wasn't around but he wasn't worried because he knows that she won't leave him. 
While the young man was holding his wife's hand, the latter noticed that his palms were shaking very much. The girl told his highness that he should not worry about this and she would not leave him. He was immediately delighted and asked if it was true. She replied that yes, but if he ever fell in love with another, then he just had to say it and she would immediately disappear making room for his new love. The crown prince's joy instantly disappeared somewhere. She seriously asked her wife what she meant. The boy hears very sad words from Ansia. She says that their marriage is political and this is what was decided for them, and not what they themselves wanted. Continuing to hold her husband's hands, the girl added that when he grows up, he will meet his true love and will probably forget about her. But the young master strictly declared that he no longer needed anyone else but her. The princess objected that when he grows up and gets rid of the curse, he will be very handsome, and many girls will want to meet him. But the young man again said that she is the most beautiful for him. Ansia laughed and suggested that he would change his mind in the future when he gets older, but now he says that because he is too young. Suddenly, Blake, with the same serious face and voice, repeated that only she was his wife and he would always be her husband. The young man, blushing in his face, looked away and said that he did not need another, after which he asked the heroine if she wanted another spouse. She smiled and said no thinking that Diana is the only one who can save him from the curse, and even if her words are a lie, she is for the good. Suddenly, the crown prince approached the protagonist and hugged her affectionately. Burying his face in the girl's shoulder, he asked her to be with him until death separates them, apologizing for the fact that he was acting selfish. Ansia blushed and burst into tears, and wiping her eyes with her hand in a trembling voice, she told her husband that he would not die, and she would not allow this to happen. The gentleman began to wipe away the princess's tears. She asked him to stop doing this as it might stain his sleeve, but he said that everything was fine. Unexpectedly, a servant entered the palace and informed the gentleman that His Majesty the Emperor had arrived to them. The young lady was surprised, and at the same time in her thoughts, she was happy about this, since she had been waiting for this for a long time. Blake's father, Tenstian, the most powerful emperor in the history of the state, came to them. When the crown prince asked the servant how his dad was doing, he said that he was fine and that he had closed the door of darkness without any injuries on his part. The boy putting his mask back on said that he expected this from him because he is very strong. An awkward silence arose between the princess, the young man, and the servant and the main character, wondered if her husband would go to greet his father. The next moment, the servant suddenly informs the girl that the blacksmith from whom she recently placed an order has arrived. She was happy about this and told her husband that she would be away for a while. The young man, smiling sweetly and nodding urgently, asked her to be careful. After this, the main character left the room and hurried to the emperor to whom she goes, accompanied by a butler. Suddenly, the man starts talking about how he actually lied to her about the blacksmith, and in fact, he did not come to her. But the girl who instantly guessed everything asked if this meant that the emperor himself wanted to see her, to which the subordinate replied that yes. The heroine continued to walk, thinking that she had guessed that the lord of the lands would want to talk to her when he arrived. The baby understands that the words about the blacksmith were just an excuse. And, in fact, Tenstion does not want to see Blake. She was surprised at how well everything had been thought out. A drop of sweat rolled down the servant's face, and he confessed to his lady that his majesty was very angry and because she had fired too many servants. The lady hopes in her mind that he is pretending to be angry. The man asked Ansia to say that she was wrong when the emperor asked her about it and he would say that the servants forced her to do dirty work. The princess thought about whether Hans was ready to take responsibility because he would be killed immediately, and in the novel he already sacrificed himself for Blake. The protagonist decided to tell him not to sacrifice himself, because if he dies, then there will be no one to support the crown prince. He opened his mouth in surprise, and staring at the girl wanted to say something, but from amazement, he could not utter a word. Ansia grinned and asked him not to worry and just trust her. The butler nevertheless bowed and said that he would do everything as she wanted. Philip, the man who founded the Empire of Light, betrayed his goddess. For such an act, she sent a curse on his descendants. The crown princess is confident that the imperial family is hiding the truth in order to protect their honor, and they condemn the one who is the successor of the curse. The goddess of light loves the empire, so she casts evil magic on the son of a tyrant with a fallen soul so that everyone knows about it. Rumors were spread that the curse's successor could spread his affliction to others, so he was sent to the southern island and left there until he died alone. 
When the evil eye appeared on Blake's skin as a child, he was immediately removed from his inheritance and had to be sent to a remote cold island. But Tenstion ordered him to be sent to the alienated palace. And since his son would die anyway, he decided not to bother himself with exile and simply left him there. In fact, the emperor loves and protects his child pretending to be indifferent. Finding herself opposite the doors of the hall in which the ruler was located, Ansia thought that the emperor loved Blake and the prince needed his father's love. She is a little nervous, but understands that she needs to greet Tenstian first, and then start a dialogue between the two of them. The fragile leg of the crown princess stepped onto the threshold of the hall when the butler told the gentleman that his son's bride had arrived. The baby greeted the great ruler of the Empire of Light, who sat majestically on the throne that rose in the center of the hall. Looking at the man's face, the girl blushed embarrassedly and lowered her head, thinking why this handsome man was not the main character of the novel for adults. Tenstion told Ansia that they had not seen each other for a long time, after which he admitted that he had heard that she had put the head butler in prison. He asked why. She replied that she was punishing him for wasting the budget allocated for the crown prince's palace. Suddenly, the man who was next to the emperor proclaimed that his son had always been loyal to the empire, and the princess accused him and imprisoned him just like that. The main character was surprised by this, and asked if he really thought it was unfair if the evidence was already obvious. She handed his majesty a certain document and asked him to look at it. Tenstion, after carefully reading the text on the paper, told his daughter-in-law that she had done a good job. The father of the fired butler was greatly outraged by this. He stated that this was a conspiracy and his son would never betray his state. But Ansia countered that her husband was served spinach soup while the head butler ate steak prepared by the imperial chef. The lady explained that there could be no question of any justice because a palace employee was wasting the crown prince's money, which is considered a crime. The father of the fired butler was so angry with the young mistress that the veins on his forehead swelled. He furiously ordered her to watch her tongue. But the next second, the emperor, with frightening calm and coldness, asked the man if he wanted to die. Cold sweat immediately poured down my uncle's face. He excitedly asked the gentleman why he asked such a question. The ruler, with the same composure, ordered the man to choose the right words when speaking to his daughter-in-law. The discouraged gentleman in a trembling voice told his majesty that he had misunderstood everything, and the princess had been the first to insult his family. However, Tenstian suddenly presenting a sword blade to the man's throat, sternly asked him where he had pulled his dirty little hands. The gentleman, with an intimidating frown, asked if he was going to hit the crown prince's wife. He began to frantically deny everything, but the king, pressing harder on Mr.'s neck, asked how he dared lie to him. The main character closed her eyes and turned away, because it was unpleasant for her to see this picture. But suddenly, a servant of the emperor appeared next to her, who told the girl that she should return. The lady was so frightened of him that she shuddered, but immediately replied that she would do so. While the butler bowed to the lady, she remembered that this man's name was Colin, and based on what he was like in the novel, she could trust him. The little girl took out a mysterious small blue ball from her pocket and handed it to the servant. When a surprised Colin asked what it was, she replied that it contained a recording of Hummel's son insulting his highness and herself. The subordinate said that he was amazed that she had prepared even this to which she said that she could not accuse the Marquis without evidence. Colin bowed his head to her highness with a smile and said that he would convey this to the emperor. Marquis Hummel later had his hand cut off for attempting to harm the crown princess in front of his majesty, and his son had his tongue pulled out for illegal possession of imperial property and insulting the princess. They were both sentenced to 30 years in prison, and the family of the Marquis, which had a long history, lost its title forever in one day. No one came to the prisoner's defense because they crossed the line. Hummel tried to hit the prince's wife in front of the emperor, and his son insulted her. The main character reflects that at this time, the emperor is finishing his business. She wonders if he will call her over to talk to him, and she also guesses that he will continue to ignore Blake. The girl believes that Tenstian was also thinking about how to get rid of Marquis Hummel, and now that he had dealt with him, she thought that he would call her. Suddenly, Ansia abruptly jumped to her feet from her chair, deciding that things wouldn't work out like that, and she herself would visit his majesty. Turning to her maid, the lady asked her to prepare a carriage for her as she was going to go to the Philian Palace. She first told the princess that if she wanted to meet the emperor, then she should probably first request an audience. 
The girl putting a cape over herself replied that if she did this, she would be refused, so she would better come to the palace herself. The servant obeyed. After some time, the main character was ready to get into the carriage and go to the city. But one sudden thing made her stop. Blake ran up to her from behind and touched her hand. He asked his wife where she was going. Madame smiled embarrassedly and said that she urgently needed to go to the square for a while. However, the boy calmly said that she was lying, after which he asked if she was really going to meet the emperor. In response to this, the protagonist only smiled sweetly and said that she would be back soon. His Highness strongly suggested that his wife go along arguing that he would protect her. She was surprised at this at first, but then smiled softly and agreed with his wishes. The young man also smiled and blushed, saying that he was very glad that they would go together. Looking into the face of her beloved husband, the heroine thought that his majesty loves his son, but as the head of state, he cannot call him to him because of the curse. The carriage with the crown prince and his wife left, and the girl also thought that if her son himself came to Tenstion, the latter would not throw him out the door. Soon the newlyweds arrived at Fillion Castle, the dark foundation of which looked very majestic and slightly ominous. Approaching the door of the master's choir, Ansia thought that since he had already finished his business, it was better for them to immediately go to his restroom. But one of the guards who guarded the entrance angrily reached out to the girl and said that if she had not asked for an audience in advance, she would not get in. At the same moment, the main character maintaining her heroic calm asked the man how he dared to touch the princess so impudently. The guard immediately lowered his hand and fell silent, as if he had completely swallowed his tongue. Taking advantage of her uncle's confusion, the protagonist squeezed her husband's hand tighter and cheerfully told him that they were moving on. Ansia, not sensing anything strange, bursts into Emperor Tenstian's room. This was her big mistake. In front of her, she saw the head of state with a naked torso, who was covered only with a towel. It looks like he just got out of the shower. His hair is damp and drops of water are running down his body. The young lady was dumbfounded on the spot and blushed like a ripe cherry unable to utter a word. The man continuing to stand calmly in this manner asked the children who had arrived what had happened. Ansia's thoughts at this time are occupied with something completely different. She admires the emperor's abs, having completely forgotten that she is in a novel for adults. Tenstian, tucking his damp hair back, asked the children again what had happened to them. The princess immediately ordered herself in her mind to get ready, because she needed to gain his trust, and in her opinion, the best thing to do was a compliment. The lady had no time to think, so she immediately carried out her plan and expressed her admiration to the lord for his beautiful body. Such an awkward, deathly silence arose between the emperor and the protagonist that the latter almost fell into the ground. A moment later, the princess realized what she had done. Her whole face turned scarlet, and she frantically began to justify herself. The gentleman remained silent, and Ansia, thinking that she would be locked up in prison at this rate, apologized and admitted that she had simply seen a man's body for the first time. Blake, who had also stripped to the waist in front of her a few days earlier, asked the girl in shock what kind of nonsense she was talking about. The heroine, raising her head up in disappointment, realized that the attempt to normalize the situation had completely failed. Here, Tenstion decides to say a few words. Putting on a robe, he declared that it is not very appropriate to talk today. The crown princess, seeing how the man tightened his belt, finally decided that she definitely could not live any longer. While the girl was trying to recover from shame, the emperor cast his fleeting glance at his son. The boy also did not look at anything else except him, as if wanting to get at least some attention from a loved one. But the only thing he got from his dad was how coldly he turned away from him. Turning his back to the children, Tenstion said that he would call them to talk a little later. Ansia embarrassedly told his highness that they would leave his mansion right away, and Blake said depressed and sad that he was leaving. After a short time, the crown princess and her husband arrived at their home palace. The main character walking along the corridor with the prince looked into his face and thought that he looked very depressed. She thought that this was already obvious because he had just met with his father, whom he had not seen for a long time, but he immediately sent him home. The girl decided to ask the saddened young man with a smile if he felt tired. He thoughtfully answered that yes and admitted that he wanted to rest a little. After these words, the boy let go of his wife's hand and about to retire to the room to rest, he asked the guard who was standing next to him to go with him. The young master went into a secluded office without saying a single word to his beloved. 
Ansia followed his highness with a worried look until the very end. The guard before going after the heir noticed the sadness on the lady's face and asked her not to worry so much to which she agreed. When the subordinate found himself in the same room with Blake, he wanted to clarify what kind of assignment he wanted to give him. Just then, the crown prince sternly approaching the guy ordered him to take off his shirt. He was very confused, but without asking any questions, he said that he understood the order. When Eden complied with Blake's request, the child's eyes sparkled with interest and admiration. The young man carefully examined the strong body of the guard, who was slightly embarrassed by this. Finally, the boy asked his subordinate what he needed to do to achieve the same body as his, to which he laughed and asked the master if he wanted the same toned body. Blake's memory flashes back to the moment when a blushing Antia excitedly apologized to the emperor for seeing his naked torso. The crown prince realizes that she was shocked to see a muscular man, but he is also a man, but he did not observe such a reaction in his direction. The boy sighed and told Adon that he wanted to have the same muscles, but his stomach was sticking out, to which he, putting on a shirt, said that everything was fine. The young master was very happy about this, and inspired by hope, he asked if it was true. The guy added that he had a cute baby belly, but these words unfortunately brought Blake's sadness back and did not help him in any way. Meanwhile, the emperor doing work in his luxurious, lonely, quiet office picked up a certain paper. After carefully reading the entry in the document, the man immediately thought about Ansia for some reason. The main character helps her husband dry his wet hair after he took a bath. She wanted to ask him something, but he just silently turned his head away from her. But the girl is in no hurry to back down. She tells Blake with a smile that he needs to look at her. He agreed with her, after which he turned around, removing the towel from his head and covering his abdomen with it. At that moment, Ansia remembered that during the bath he covered his stomach with his hands, so she thought that something must have happened to him. The princess decided to please her husband, that her camisote would be ready tomorrow, and then she would be able to cook a lot of delicious food. But he sadly said that he did not want to, and he doesn't eat at all anymore. The boy admitted that he doesn't even have muscles like a real man, so he's going to train. It dawned on the protagonist that Blake was behaving so strangely because he began to worry about what she said about the emperor. She consoled the child that he was a real man, but the prince plopping down on the bed said that he would train because he also wanted abs. The lady first told his highness that he might have a cold, but then tried to calm him down, saying that she liked him and he needed to eat. Then the girl wanted to tell her husband that he had a cute baby belly, but he immediately said touchily that he did not have any baby belly. The heroine was stunned when he guessed that she was going to say exactly this, but then she began to frantically think about how to cheer him up. She couldn't think of anything better than to start playing some kind of game, where she attacked Blake with her whole body screaming that she was attacking him. The princess began to tickle the young master, who laughed loudly because of this, but then he asked him to stop, and the girl obeyed him. Antia took advantage of the moment and hugged her husband. She tells him that she really likes him and values his health, so he needs to eat well. When she said that if he ate well, he would one day grow taller than her, the crown prince smiled and said that he would do so then. The young lady thought that her husband was very sweet when he smiled, and if he was so happy, then his soul felt better. At this time, a young guy with black hair and purple eyes named Yunan came to the emperor who was sitting on his throne. Mr. Tenstian asked his subordinate whether his son and Anzia returned home safely. He reported that yes, and that at home after taking a bath they fell asleep together. His majesty reflected that Blake had changed a lot since the last time he saw him. His empty eyes before were now sparkling. The man believes that he seemed to have thrown away his old image, along with his hunched body, and in front of him he stood straight and tightly held his wife's hand. According to the ruler, Colin's report about the princess was full of praise without coldness or cavilling. The emperor decided to ask his spy what he himself thought about the crown princess, whether she could be trusted, and tell him what he saw while he was away for a whole month in order to close the door of darkness. The guy calmly but thoughtfully answered the master that yes, and this girl is a good person. By order of the emperor, Yunin secretly watched for a whole month how the crown prince lived. He kept watch over the servants who harassed him. He also made sure to provide treatment to the boy if the effect of the curse suddenly intensified when the king used the power of light. But the stalker admits in his thoughts that from a certain moment he forgot about his goal and watched only Ansia. The guy thinks she is a wonderful person.
Yunin realized that he envied the prince, because if he had such a bright soul next to him like that girl, his life would change for the better. The emperor remained as unperturbed as before, but he tells the youth that he did not expect him to say that. He raised his head in surprise and asked the gentleman if this bothered him. The ruler said no, and he thinks that on the contrary, it's good because he hasn't seen Yunin smile for a long time. The next day, the main character presents her husband Eden and the maid with new dishes, a large metal camisot. A beaming smile and a cute blush appeared on Blake's face. He said that this was the first time he had seen such a thing, and the guard agreed with him. The maid was surprised out loud at how much the princess knew about the culture of the East, and the guy said that she was very smart. The prince supported them, saying that his wife was a real genius. Ansia was so embarrassed by so many compliments that she blushed cutely. She is pleased to hear this, but still she believes that she is not that brilliant. She cheerfully rolled up her sleeves and said that she would now prepare an excellent dish and rely on the help of others. But Melissa excitedly asked how it was. The girl said that there was nothing wrong with this, since she would be helped. But at that moment, Blake raised his hand and said that he would help her too. The protagonist was very happy about this, and filled with happiness she agreed with him. But unexpectedly, envoys of the emperor appeared behind the people including Colin. He politely greeted those present. When the princess turned to the man in bewilderment, he greeted her too. When the prince asked what happened, the servant said that he came here on the orders of his majesty to invite the two of them to visit him. The main character was very surprised when the servant said this, so she asked if the king was inviting her too. He replied that it was so after which he handed the young lady an envelope. Ancia noticed that the envelope had the coat of arms of the imperial family, but began to think why Tenstion invited her if she made a mistake yesterday. Colin also said that the ruler had sent them gifts, so he suggested that they quickly go to the palace. The crown princess, watching the servants bring more and more gifts, asked if there had been some mistake because there were a lot of treats. But the emperor's servant, putting on fashionable glasses, said that no and all these boxes were gifts from Tenstian for Blake and his wife. Ansia decided that she did not believe this because the master had no reason to send her gifts. She suggests that he was simply in a better mood after she complimented the beauty of his abs. The girl immediately ordered herself to return from heaven to earth because this was impossible. She humbly told the imperial servants that she would accept their invitation. After a while, the maid was already finishing preparing the young lady for the meeting with the emperor beautifully braiding her hair. At the end, the servant said that everything was ready. The heroine looking in the mirror saw herself in a beautiful blue dress and with a braided braid decorated with flowers. The girl blushed and covered her mouth in admiration, after which she told the princess that she was beautiful. One of the subordinates told the little girl that it was time for her to leave. But then the beautiful lady turned her attention to Blake, who was staring at her. Not understanding why he was looking so intently, the girl asked him whether this image suited her or not. He immediately came to his senses and blushed, after which he told his wife that she was very beautiful and looked simply charming in this dress. The girl smiled, took her beloved by the hands, and said that in that case they could hit the road. The emperor, meanwhile, was already waiting for his guests in a beautiful greenhouse drinking black tea and thinking deeply about something. But he did not have to wait long as Princess Anzia was already hurrying towards him. Moving closer to the master, the young lady greeted the great light of the empire. The man asked her to sit at his table, then said that her outfit suited her very well. She first smiled and thanked him for the compliment and then for the gifts he sent them. The little girl admits that her favorite gift was the magnificent golden ball. Tenstion became interested in this and suddenly asked the guest if she liked gold. The heroine thought about why the king suddenly asked about the gold and not about the ball, but said that it was because the prince could use it. He was silent for several minutes, but then in a stern voice asked the young lady if she should worry about the crown prince. The child replied that this was in the order of things because he was her husband. The emperor, elegantly raising the cup to his lips, asked how she could like a boy like Blake. But the girl said that she would like to ask him about this, namely whether there are people who hate him. Tenstion's gaze immediately faded and became very frightening. He said that many in society despise his damn son. Ansia's words amazed the master. She says that they are being misled by false rumors and that she is sure that he also likes the crown prince. The man thoughtfully put the cup on the table, expressing surprise that the princess did not observe etiquette. He says that the prince is the successor of the curse. The little girl smiled and said that Blake was his son first and foremost. 
His Majesty seriously folded his hands on the table and asked the girl why she was so sure that he liked this child. The crown princess replied that if he did not like his son and daughter-in-law, he would not send gifts. Tenstian said that it was simply gratitude for their business with Marquis Hummel. The little girl decided to ask if he had forgiven her for yesterday's offense. The gentleman suddenly asked if there was something like that. Antia laughed and said that she was confused, so she doesn't remember well what happened. The ruler also smiled and said that it was brave of her. He then ordered the servants to bring refreshments. A few minutes later, a bunch of different desserts appeared on the table, from cakes and pastries to sweets and cookies. The main character was so happy about this that she blushed all over, but did not forget to thank His Majesty for such treats. Having tried a piece of cake with strawberries, the young lady could not restrain herself and exclaimed out loud that it was incredibly delicious. This also consoled the gentleman. Unexpectedly, the protagonist, quietly putting her fork on the table, said that His Majesty the Crown Prince would also like this dessert. The emperor was silent for a moment, but then said that he would then send these dishes to Crown Prince Blake's palace too. Joy and happiness returned to the girl again, and she sincerely thanked the king. Continuing the modest tea-drinking, Tenstion told the guest that he had heard that she had extensive knowledge of Eastern culture. Antia thought that as she had expected, he had found out everything about her in advance, because it would have been strange if he had not been interested in her until now. The lady replied that she didn't know much about it, but that their culture was interesting to her. But the man said that it was not so easy to find information about it. The lady thought that if she said that she had seen publications on this topic in the Count's library, then other people would believe her. But the emperor would find it strange. How could a ten-year-old girl be so smart? She got up from her seat and approached the gentleman saying that she would share a secret with him. Covering her lips from prying eyes if there were any, the girl whispered in the man's ear that she actually knew many languages. He asked with interest whether it was really a lot to which the child said yes, and she knows all the languages of the world. The man was surprised by this and asked if it was true to which the lady calling him father replied that it was true. Tenstian looked at the girl in confusion and asked what she just said. The princess laughed and explained that since she was his daughter-in-law, he was like a father to her. A faint smile appeared on the emperor's face, and he admitted that it was so. The man said that she had a lot of difficulties due to her soon to be married, so he asks the lady not to be shy and to contact him if she needs anything. The guest agreed with him and promised that she would come to him often. On this bright note, the protagonist's meeting with the emperor ended. After several hours, Ansia was already at home, where she had already taken up the task that she planned to do today. She prepared many oriental dishes for her friends, a thick soup called doenjang jjigae with soybean paste onions and pumpkin and a fried egg and mushroom roll. The faces of Eden, Melissa, and Blake showed admiration and charm from such beauty. The crown princess, not even suspecting the fact that someone is watching her, asks her friends to try the dishes and tell her their opinions on the taste. First, the crown prince said that the food was very tasty, and then the guard called Ansia a culinary genius. The girl thanked them and offered to try Sunyun, a hot rice drink. All this time, the talented cook was being watched by Yunhan, who climbed onto the facade of the building and looked at everything through the window. A scarlet blush appeared on the guy's face, and he wondered what kind of strange feeling he had every time he watched the princess. No one should ever know about this young man who is the emperor's shadow. Yunhan thought that if he had not been saved by Tenstian when he was wounded by an arrow and pursued by warriors, he would already be dead. He, having become obliged to the king for salvation, became his shadow and faithfully carried out his orders without a single failure. This devoted young man was very interested in Shang Yun. This rice drink has a very pleasant and attractive smell. The guy thinks that he has already tasted all kinds of delicacies while following the emperor in the shadows, but he has never smelled such a mouth-watering aroma. Deciding to try one spoon, he quietly approached the camisot thinking that this utensil was similar to the one his mother used. But suddenly, he heard a sound behind him, which is why he quickly realized that he had problems and needed to hide quickly. Soon, Ansia came to the Sunyan as if nothing had happened and was immediately attracted by one strange detail. She saw that the lid of her camisot was lying on the side. The girl began to think about why this happened. 
Suddenly something happened that she never expected. Next to her, she saw a black cat with purple eyes who was looking at her intently. The lady took her in her arms, calling her her cutie, then jokingly asked the animal if he had opened her camisote. The cat's eyes sparkled and he meowed, which is why the girl realized that he was very hungry. She decides to give the baby some milk. Suddenly the cat stared at the fragrant rice drink, and the main character thought that he wanted to drink Xiongyun. The princess wondered whether cats drink it at all, but the animal continued to meow as if hinting that he really wanted it. Ansia, remembering that there is no cat food in this world, agreed with a smile to pour some rice drink for her furry guest. She poured the sunyun into a saucer and placed it on the floor so that the exhausted animal could hide its hunger. The princess, noticing with what pleasure the cat was drinking, realized that he was very hungry. She says that if his owner starved him, then he is bad. The girl hugged the kitten and said that if it does not have an owner, then she will become one. Then Crown Prince Blake appeared nearby and asked Ansia what she was doing. The lady showed him a cat that she had picked up on the street and asked if she was cute, to which he said that it was better not to keep her that way. The girl objected that she was very calm in her arms and apparently she liked her, but from the expression on the cat's face, it is clear that she understands what the mistress is talking about and she doesn't really like it. But the crown prince suddenly calmly told his wife that she was holding in her hands not a cat, but a cat. The animal immediately began to escape from the lady's hands when she asked if they could now check if it was a male. The animal manages to carry out its plan and quickly lands on the ground and runs away. Ansia was very surprised by this, although she had previously thought how sweet and calm the cat in her hands was. She says she would like to see him again. A few hours later, when the protagonist entered the emperor's office, he was very surprised and asked her what happened. The lady laughed at him and reminded him that he allowed her to come to him at any time. He said that he simply did not expect her to come to him so soon after their last meeting. The man asked again what was wrong. The girl pouring a cup of Xiongyun for the ruler says that today she was cooking in the new camisote, so she brought him her prepared drink. Tenstian, after taking one sip, said that it tasted strange, and the princess, who was alarmed by his reaction, asked if he liked it. The gentleman said no, and she did very well. The girl said that in this case, she would cook Xiongyun more often, to which the king agreed and asked her to come to him more often. Returning home, Ansha immediately fell on her bed thinking about what a busy day she had today, gifts and tea with the emperor. She is also tired of cooking on the camisote, but most of all, she is happy to meet the cat who she really remembers for its cuteness. Suddenly, Blake comes into the young lady's room, and she greets him as if nothing had happened. But for some reason, the boy silently sat down next to his wife and stared straight into her face. She even stood up in surprise and also looked into her husband's eyes in bewilderment. His highness, without taking his eyes off the princess, simply said meow to her. The crown princess fell into a stupor and seemed to swallow her tongue. She asked him what he said. He, hugging his life partner, said that since she loves cats, he also wants to become one. The young man, looking at his wife with a pitiful look, asked if she needed another animal when she had him. Without letting go of his beloved, the boy promised that he would be anything for her. A rabbit, a cat, or a puppy as long as she did not look for other animals. The girl called out to her husband in bewilderment, and he again responded sweetly, uttering only a single meow. The main character suddenly rushed into the arms of the prince, exclaiming that he was such a cutie. Blake enjoyed the hug so much that his cheeks flushed, and he giggled happily. Meanwhile, a servant brings Master Richard a report from the Imperial Palace that he has requested. The young man has absolutely no idea what is going on there. Today, the king was given oriental food, and Tenstian gave his daughter-in-law many dresses and precious stones. From the servant's report, the prince realized that the emperor gives gifts to Ansia too often, and he has no idea why this girl could interest the master so much. The only person Richard recognizes is the ruler of the empire, and he made a lot of efforts so that the king noticed him, but he could not get even a crumb of his attention. But the heroine easily gained not only the attention of Tenstion, but also the monster crown prince. Richard doesn't understand what happened and why she changed so much. The guy angrily clenched his teeth and grabbed his head, thinking that if he had known that this would happen, he would have long ago accepted the love feelings of that child. He considers the protagonist very heartless because he remembers that she persistently ran after him but immediately changed after the wedding. But the prince decided that this is why he does not want to back down. 
The more difficult it is to get a thing, the more desirable it becomes, and he will make Anzia his own. Soon, Richard came to his father's office as he had summoned him. He calmly asked what was the matter. But not a single word was heard from the man whose eyebrows were furrowed in a terrifying manner. He just clenched his fist angrily on the table, looking at his son. But a moment later, the gentleman threw a candlestick towards the child, which flew past the young man's imperturbable face and crashed against the wall. Finally, the crazy man shouted and asked the child if he could do his job at all. He notifies that the princess visited the imperial palace today. The man is infuriated by the fact that the girl is doing such a thing as visiting the king's palace, and that she will even attend the imperial ball in honor of the sealing ceremony. The sealing ceremony is the most important holiday in the state which appeared in honor of the return of the emperor after sealing the doors of darkness. Richard thought about what would happen if Tenstian held the crown princess's hand, because delegates from all countries would be present there. The boy assumes that in this case everyone will think that the emperor is serious about the crown prince, and then Mr. Blake's position will naturally strengthen. In the end, he asked his father what he should do, to which he irritably replied that he could not solve anything, from the Hummel matter to the press. When Dad called him a real boy with the blood of a slave, the prince angrily started talking about how there was a way to change the situation. The man instantly calmed down and asked what kind of method this was, to which the son replied that they just needed to take the princess over to their side. The gentleman thought well when Richard said that Ansia had always longed for her father's love, and if you talked to Count Belasian, he would play along with them. Still a smile appeared on the sly man's face, and he said that they should try it. Mr. Belasian, finding himself in his daughter's palace and slapping her in the face, shouts that he came to her only because of her cold. The main character, rubbing her cheek hot from the blow, tearfully asks her dad to forgive her. The baby admits that she was wrong, but tells her father that she really feels bad, even very bad. He did not listen to her and immediately began to scold the girl for the fact that she was a disgrace to the family and was born only because two families became related by money. Anchia, sitting on the floor, apologized to her dad, but he said that he still shakes when he remembers her mother. While the father was yelling at his daughter, ordering her to die quickly so as not to disgrace the Belasian family, the lady wiping tears from her cheeks did not stop asking for forgiveness. Suddenly, the protagonist wakes up covered in sweat and tears, unfortunately, or fortunately, everything that happened to her earlier was just a bad dream. Blake, noticing that his wife had suddenly woken up, excitedly asked if everything was okay and if she was having a nightmare. The princess thought that it was so and said so. The heroine knows that this is not just a dream, but her memories of what happened to her before her rebirth. The prince plaintively telling his wife that because he was nearby, she had a terrible dream, did not even notice how the girl put her hand behind his head. The young master was very surprised when Ansha pulled him close to her so that he lay right on top of her. She closing her teary eyes said that she felt better when he lay with her like that, so she asked him to stay with her like that for a little longer. When evening came, Mr. Belasian's servant set a beautiful table for the master and his guests to have a delicious dinner. One guest says that the emperor has reserved the most famous aristocratic ateliers for the princess. He admits that his daughter was furious because of this. Anzia's father smiles and agrees with his friend. The man says that he also heard that his majesty purchased a pink diamond for the girl, and Anzia's father also nodded, smiling shyly. Belasian thought what kind of news he was hearing now. Until that moment he knew nothing, and he had not written to Ancier since he sent her to the prince. He clenched his fist angrily and decided that the heroine would now help her family well, although he had no idea how she managed to get the king's attention. But then a butler approaches Count Belasian, who notifies him that His Highness the Duke requests a meeting with him. After some time, the door of the guest room where Arnold Castle Richard's father was sitting opened slightly. Arnold smiled at his friend and said that they had not seen each other for so long. He was also greeted, but thought that this man had ignored him for a long time, but when Tenstian fell in love with his daughter Ancia, he suddenly appeared. The duke gave the gentleman a compliment that he looked very good, to which the count said that he was simply glad that the king took such care of his child. Castle said that he treasures Ancia, and Belasian replied that this is in the order of things because she always follows him and will even die if he orders. Richard's father, putting a cup of tea on the table, started talking about how surprising it is today to give a child such a rare education. He asked a friend if his second daughter was as stunning as her sister Ancia. 
The Count laughed heartily, after which he declared that his second daughter was not at all the equal of the first because Diana was his great pride. Suddenly Arnold says something that shocks the man. He offers him to give his daughter Diana as his daughter-in-law since she is so outstanding. Mr. Belasian pretended to be surprised, but reflected that if she became the daughter-in-law of the Duke of Castle, then perhaps in the future she would receive the title of Empress, and he would become the Emperor's father-in-law. However, the Duke immediately warned that for this, it was necessary to check the quality of education that he gave to his children. A greedy smile appeared on Papa Ansia's face, and he told his friend that he would provide him with the result soon. At this time, the main character remembering her dream grabbed her head and realized that reading a novel and experiencing everything for herself are completely different things. She looked at the inside of her palm and thought how much Ansia had been through and how much she had endured until she jumped into the water. The young lady tiredly closed her eyes and thought about the fact that after all, it was her own father who brought her to this, and albeit indirectly, he was a murderer. A maid enters the crown princess's room and notifies her that Count Belasian has arrived. This confused the protagonist at first, and she wondered what she should do. But still, she orders him to be brought to the guest room. Meanwhile, the girl's father can't help but feel angry that his daughter should have run out and greeted him joyfully, but didn't. He glanced at the exquisite watch and realized that he had been waiting for the meeting for 55 minutes. The man decided that he needed to start raising her again. But as soon as Belasian heard the door open, he immediately irritably asked Ansia what she had been doing all this time, that she crawled to greet him just now. But Mr. fell silent when he saw the princess, who no longer looked like her former self. A serious expression on her face, a lot of jewelry and self-confidence. The young lady sternly, without any emotions of joy that the Count expected to see, asked her father what brought him here. Dad decided that she became so bold because of the Emperor's attention. He asked, stunned, if she was too impudent and if she had forgotten her manners. But then, the maid Melissa stood up for the girl, who politely asked the gentleman to watch his words in the presence of the princess. He suddenly asked angrily, how dare some subordinate interfere in the conversation when Her Highness's father was speaking? Unexpectedly, the main character with the same seriousness asked her dad not to address her servants in such a manner. The man asked in bewilderment what she meant, and the protagonist added that if he was going to continue to commit atrocities, then she would leave. Belasian, raising his hand at his daughter, angrily asked if she thought that he would be more lenient towards her, since she was now the crown princess. But his hand hung in the air when the girl calmly asked him if he had heard the news about the Marquis Hummel. The embittered father, unable to utter a single word, fell silent, only grinding his teeth in response. He lowered his trembling hand in horror, because he remembered that the Marquis had swung at Ansia and lost his title because of it. Mr. realized that his daughter had definitely changed. The stupid girl thirsty for love had disappeared. Now he sees in front of him only the wife of the crown prince, who has the highest position in society. Belasian smiled cowardly and told the young lady that he was just very worried, so he made a mistake but asked why she was so callous to him. She suddenly ordered him to leave and not appear near her palace again. The girl furiously told her father that this time she would let him go, but the next time if there was one, he would not expect mercy. The guards quickly grabbed the man and took him out of the room, but he continued to ask his daughter to talk a little and let him go. The heroine silently looked after him, guessing that since the emperor was showering her with gifts, her father decided to intimidate and use her. Her gaze was full of rage, she considers the Count not a person, but trash whom she now does not want to see at all. Even after everything that happened, Ansia's dad still sends her letters, but the princess decided that she would not read this nonsense, and she doesn't have time for this since she is busy with more important things. A calm orchestral composition plays in a spacious, elegant hall. The girl is busy preparing for the celebration of the sealing ceremony, namely a dance rehearsal, but she's not doing very well right now. The crown princess barely had time to place the right foot, thinking that everything was simple with etiquette, but she found it very difficult with dancing. But suddenly, her foot accidentally slips, causing her to fall to the floor. Blake the maid, the maid, and even the black cat immediately ran up to the victim. They all excitedly asked the heroine how she was feeling. She sheepishly replied that everything was fine, but thought that she, of course, was grateful to them. But she wanted them to let her be alone now. The young lady rose wearily to her feet, the maid with whom she danced said that this would be the end of the rehearsal to which Ansia agreed. 
Suddenly, the protagonist notices her little friend, a black cat with purple eyes. She sat down to him and extended her hands, beckoning him to her. The girl took the animal in her arms and hugged him squealing because he came to her today. Then she asked the cat if he saw her fall. He just meowed, but thought that she just needed to place her right leg correctly. The heroine said that perhaps dancing was not her thing, and asked if she could do it, but the cat continued to meow thus, trying to say that she just needed to put her foot in the right place. The crown princess smiled and told her furry friend that since he cheered her up, she would treat him to a sung yun. Soon the cat was slurping up the rice drink, but the owner asked him to drink it more slowly. Then Blake came to the heroine, wiping the sweat from his face with a towel. The lady asked if he had studied fencing with Eden, to which he said yes. But suddenly, the prince's gaze focused on the animal, and he asked his wife why he was still there. She smiled embarrassedly and asked her husband why he treats cats this way, and asks him to give this cat a little love and affection. The boy bent over to the cat and thought deeply about something, after which he said that it did not look like an animal. The princess asked what he meant, and the gentleman reaching out to the animal with his hand said that he felt something strange. Suddenly, the cat jumps from the owner's arms and runs away at the speed of a bullet. Ancia was very surprised by this, jerked towards her furry friend and called out to him. But at the same moment, Blake took his wife by the hands and asked her not to look for him anymore, then asked why she continued to pay attention to other males. The girl smiled shyly and said that it was just a cat, but the prince said that this did not suit him and that he as a male should be enough. The heir asked if she liked rabbits, to which she replied that she didn't, and then the gentleman, cutely lowering his eyelids and clenching his fists, asked if she liked cats, after which he meowed. The protagonist immediately blushed and thought that her husband ate so much that he became such a cutie. The lady declared that she liked everything about her husband, and the crown prince laughed happily. Then the girl remembered something and asked Blake if he could fulfill her request, to which he immediately agreed without hesitation. The princess blushed and asked him why he agreed so easily because she might ask him for something strange. He smiled and said that it didn't matter to him because he could fulfill any wish of his wife. The main character took the heir's hands and asked him to help her practice dancing with her. The girl told his majesty that she wanted to dance her first dance with him. Blake swallowed his tongue for a second, a slight embarrassment visible on his face. The young prince smiled and told his wife that he would certainly help her. The girl says she is making no progress, but the boy says that is not the case. The lady became embarrassed and said that she could step on his foot, but he replied that he did not care and it would not hurt him since she was a fairy. The heroine embarrassedly asked if he considered her a fairy, to which he replied that yes. Antia laughed at this, but then took her husband's hands and invited him to start the rehearsal. But suddenly she saw that her partner's face was very red, so she asked if he was shy, to which he excitedly said that he was not. The girl smiled silently and began to perform the dance, which turned out to be very beautiful and bewitching. But suddenly the princess stepped on her partner's foot, and at the same moment sheepishly apologized. But immediately after that, Madame hit Blake's head painfully, causing her to scream. The lady was very embarrassed and told his highness that she still didn't know how to dance, but he just laughed and said that this was only her first time. The little girl asked why he was doing so well, and the prince replied that he was just watching her. He told his wife that she too would succeed. Soon the couple continued to rehearse the dance again, and they did it so well that the lady's unprofessionalism was difficult to notice. Blake and Antia prepared the ballroom dance all day until the sun set below the horizon and the stars and moon appeared in the sky. The protagonist, wearily leaning her elbows on the balcony railing, tells her husband that she barely managed to dance with him once, and it was all thanks to him. The young master told the girl that she shouldn't put so much pressure on herself, because his majesty would dance much better than him, so she shouldn't worry. The lady asked if he really thought so, and he replied that he did, and added that everyone would admire her so that no one would notice how she danced. The princess blushed and laughed sweetly. She appreciates the support of a loved one. The crown prince said that she would be the most beautiful at that ball, and all the guests would simply fall in love with her. But suddenly the boy's gaze dimmed and he wanted to say that he also wanted to go to the holiday, but in the middle he fell silent in frustration. The main character held her breath in surprise and stared at her husband. She didn't dare say anything, but thought that she would also like to see him there. Ancia, placing her hand on his highness's palm, said that when he becomes an adult, he will also be able to attend the ball. The young man decisively answered that yes, 
and promised that then he would definitely accompany her. The crown princess smiled and said she was looking forward to it. After some time, the heroine, having placed aromatic soup on the emperor's table, cheerfully asked him what he thought she had prepared today. The man stared contemptuously at the dish, frowning his eyebrows, and told the girl that she was very brave since she decided to kill the ruler of the lands in front of his own eyes. The crown princess laughed at this joke and convinced her father-in-law that she was not going to poison him. He, having scooped up some soup with a spoon, said that this is what everyone who brings him food says. Tenstion tried the dish, and when the young lady asked how it tasted, he said it was good. Ansia was so happy about this that she shed tears of happiness. She remembers that the gentleman liked bibimbap last time. The girl is happy that there is a person in this world who also loves spicy food. The baby said that she was glad about this, because she was worried that he wouldn't like it. But he consoled her by saying that she was worrying in vain, and he would even eat poison from her. The emperor elegantly wiped his lips with a napkin, and the princess said that he could not take the poison as he would get sick, and Blake would be very sad. The man thought deeply about something and told his daughter-in-law that she always does something for him, and he is glad that she does not hate him. Mrs. Belazian tells the king that he is the light of their empire, and for the sake of the crown prince and his people, he must think about his health first. The heroine immediately set up an interrogation mode and sternly informed Tenstion that Sir Colin had told her that he had not slept all night today. He asked her to stop grumbling and start eating. The gentleman admitted that he also wanted to give her a gift, but the lady said that she did not need anything. Then the emperor, seriously folding his hands, declared that he would build a glass greenhouse for her in the palace of Amoria. The crown prince's palace where the main character lives looks old and abandoned. Its name is Amoria which means love. But there was not a single greenhouse around this castle, so it was impossible to see flowers in winter. His majesty thought his idea was very good, so he decided that he would fill up that lake next to the palace and build a greenhouse there. The protagonist remembers that he is talking about the very lake into which Ansia fell before her wedding. The girl admitted to his majesty that if this was because of her, then he should not do this, because then she made a mistake since she did not know the area well. The young lady promises that this will never happen again. But the gentleman answered negatively. He, frowning his eyebrows, said that he could not allow his daughter-in-law to be near that terrible place. Ansia smiled shyly and thought that the lake is not the enemy of any parent, but she doesn't understand why Tensteon is so serious now. Sometime later, Ansia, having lunch at the same table with her husband, informs him that the lake will soon be filled in and a greenhouse will be built there. The prince is very happy about this. The little girl asked him if it was normal for it to disappear, to which he said that she had fallen into it, and it would only be better if it was gone. Belasian decided to clarify whether he really didn't feel sorry, and Blake answered with frightening determination that it would be great if they put him to sleep right now. The princess was embarrassed because she thought that at such moments her husband looked like the emperor. She just can't understand why that lake bothered them so much. The boy said that it would be great if instead of all the lakes in the world there were greenhouses, then he suggested cabbage as something that could be planted. The main character said that this is a vegetable from the east, and then she will be able to cook kimchi, which is her favorite dish. Ansia admitted that he probably wouldn't like it since it was a little spicy, but Blake happily decided that he could eat it. The girl took her friend by the cheeks and said that he still needed to grow a little, but in this place he had definitely gained a little weight. His Highness was overcome with a feeling of shame, and he was embarrassed by this. But the young lady laughed and said that he was so cute. The crown princess asked her husband if he had any wishes for planting, to which he immediately replied that they were roses. The lady asked if he really wanted to plant roses, and he replied that it was true. He wanted to plant them for her. The main character thought that a red rosebud means love, and this flower is given when a proposal is made. She clenched her fist in alarm and wondered if she could even accept this flower from Blake. The next day in the morning, the sleepy protagonist rose from the bed. The girl is in no hurry to get up. She thought that the day of the ball had finally arrived. Then the prince wakes up on the bed next to the princess and rubbing his eyes sleepily in a hoarse voice asks his wife if she is leaving. Ansia smiled tenderly and told her husband that yes, and she would already be getting ready for the holiday. To the girl's surprise, his Highness was very happy for her and wished her good luck.
The heroine thought that her husband always smiles, although only she receives gifts from the emperor studies etiquette, and only she attends the ball as if his happiness lies in her being happy. Blake smiled sincerely and wished his wife a good time at the celebration. After some time, the young princess was already being prepared for the holiday. The servants attached a pretty pink hairpin to her silky golden hair. The lady's hands were also put in order. The girl was given a neat manicure, her skin was powdered, and her ring finger was decorated with a ring with a red stone. As a result, the maids dressed Ansia in a gorgeous, delicate look consisting of an airy pink dress, jewelry, and accessories. The main character smilingly thanked her subordinates for helping her get ready for the ball, because they had worked hard since the morning. The girls blushed and said that it was an honor for them to serve her that she was very beautiful and she would definitely be the main hero of today's celebration. Within a few minutes, the smart girl was going down the stairs to the first floor in order to quickly get into the carriage and leave. But suddenly she is noticed by Emperor Tenstion, who has been waiting for her below all this time. When the lady came closer to him, the man complimented her, saying that she looked beautiful. The girl said he was great too. He stated that she was flattering him, but Anzia immediately objected that this was not so, then admitted that she had some strange feeling, but asked the gentleman to wait a little until she understood what it was. A moment later, the princess said that her father was simply perfect, which made Tenstion's eyes widen. Still, the ruler laughed and told the girl that she was flattering him anyway. His long-fingered hand reached out to the protagonist, and he invited her to go to the carriage. The princess's small palm touched the emperor's hand and squeezed it pleasantly. Mrs. Belasian agreed with Tenstion, calling him father. His majesty and his daughter-in-law hurried to the carriage. Soon, the emperor and the main character arrived at the celebration, where the butler majestically introduced them to the guests. The ballgoers bowed their heads to greet His Majesty, the great light of their empire, and Her Highness, the wife of the crown prince. But suddenly among the guests, Ansia notices Richard, who also bowed to them smilingly. The girl's mood immediately deteriorated when she saw him, because she had to meet him even after her recent refusal. However, she looked at the majestic king and thought that in any case, the main characters should be like this. But the next moment she decided that even if they were not like that, then let them be cuties like Blake. Tenstion, noticing that his daughter-in-law was thinking about something, asked if everything was all right. He leaned towards the girl to better hear what she wanted to tell him. The little girl whispered that he looked very cool. The man laughed modestly and told the young lady that she was flattering him again. At this time, the guest's faces showed obvious surprise from the fact that His Majesty leaned towards the girl and even smiled at her. The main character fell into a stupor from this. She doesn't understand why those present were so surprised by Tenstian's usual smile. The princess looked at her father in surprise and thought about the image he had then. The girl noticed that when the smile on the gentleman's face disappeared, the atmosphere in the hall changed. She realized that this was the king's influence on the rich. The ruler proposed to start their evening as soon as possible, so he proceeded to perform the opening speech. The protagonist sitting waiting thought that when he finished his speech, he would ask her to dance and then the ball would really begin. The lady clutched the fabric of her dress excitedly as she wanted to have her first dance with Blake, but was afraid of appearing capricious if she asked for it. When the emperor finished reading his speech, he told the guests that he was going to dance with his daughter-in-law today, but he wouldn't because of his terrible skills. It was difficult not to notice the bewilderment of those present, but Tenstion wished everyone to once again give glory to the goddess of light and enjoy the evening. As His Majesty sat back on the throne, the girl who did not understand anything turned to him. He smiled and asked if she wanted to do her first dance with Blake. The princess blushed and replied that she wanted to, as it turns out, Tenstian understands her feelings. The man added that he would wait for a second chance to dance with her, for which Antia sincerely thanked him. The king's hand touched the girl's head, and the ruler told his daughter-in-law that he was very grateful to her. She was surprised at how warm her father's touch was. The two ladies who were watching them were very surprised that the emperor stroked the girl's head, and they couldn't believe their ears when he called her beautiful daughter-in-law. Ansia was very confused by this. She thought what kind of image her father-in-law had, that guests were surprised by such little things. The girl's foot went down the steps when the master said that even if she didn't dance, she should have a good time at her first ball. One man who introduced himself to the heroine as Marquis Sheldron told her that she was truly a wonderful blessing to their empire. 
The little girl replied that she was pleased to meet him, then admitted that she had heard that his son graduated from the Academy of Knights, for which she congratulated him. She then turned to Countess Marcion, who had recently welcomed her precious fifth grandson, Ansia, said that he is blessed by the goddess of light. The protagonist has one more thing that worries her no less than etiquette at the ball. This is remembering all the aristocrats, which is what she did before the ball. Determining the list of rich people was a basic skill for the empress or the crown prince's servant, and Anxia had no problem greeting everyone today. Suddenly behind her, the young lady notices Count Belasian, her father, who looked at her so angrily as if she were not his daughter at all. Immediately after this, the irritated man turned around and walked away holding in his arm some little girl who looked like the protagonist. The main character guessed that this lady next to him was none other than her sister Diana. Ansia lowered her sad gaze to the floor and wondered if everything was fine with her sister and if she was healthy. Suddenly, another acquaintance Richard approached her and greeted her cheerfully. The crown princess also greeted him, but her expression clearly showed that she was tired of this boy and did not want to communicate with him. But the prince told the lady that now she looked even more beautiful, after which he extended his hand to her and invited her to dance her first dance with him. Ansia frowned in bewilderment and smiled at the same time she wondered what had happened to this little fellow that he was offering this to her in all seriousness. The girl realizes that the princess's first dance partner should be a prince, and the others, given their status, only say hello, but this gentleman immediately proudly invites her to dance. The lady crossed her arms displeasedly shook her head and replied that she was very sorry, but she had to refuse him. But Richard doesn't think of backing down. He smiles and tells the lady that she doesn't need to be embarrassed if she doesn't know how to dance, because he will lead the dance well. The heroine flushed with anger, because he essentially believes that if the emperor did not dance with her, then her skills are at the very bottom. But then the girl declared that she would not dance unless his skills were as good as his majesty's. One of the ladies who stood nearby laughed and told the princess that there were no people who could dance better than Mr. Tenstian. Another lady mockingly said that if she is looking for a dance partner on par with the emperor, she will not find anyone because the king is the best at this. Richard clenched his fist in displeasure, and the protagonist thought that his pride must have been hurt. But even so, she showed a little courtesy. The embittered young man turned around and left, and the young crown princess turned away as if nothing had happened. After some time, the main character went out to get some fresh air on the balcony. She thinks about Blake, because this is the first time they have been apart for so long. She realized that she missed her rabbit husband. The baby thinks that he is crying now because he misses her. Suddenly, three timid knocks were heard at the entrance to the balcony, after which someone's small hand appeared between the curtains that covered the entrance. The unexpected guest asked Ansia if he could enter. The lady thought it was a girl's voice. The curtains on the terrace mean it is busy, but the girl is probably very tired and has nowhere to go. The heroine allowed the stranger to come in, after which a blonde with blue eyes looked out from behind the curtains and greeted her older sister. Antia immediately recognized her relative, with whom she had recently severed all ties. This is the main character of the novel, Diana. The Count's daughter told her sister that she looked very beautiful today like an angel. She added that she was not just beautiful, but elegant. The lady is so enchanted by the princess that she doesn't understand how she can be so beautiful. The protagonist thought that she was glad that her sister was being raised well. Diana loved Ansia very much. At first, Ansia loved Diana, but her father constantly interfered, and this separated them. Every time Diana said that she wanted to do something with her sister, the Count beat his eldest daughter. As the beatings continued, Ansia kept her distance from Diana, who could no longer ask her sister to play with her. Later, she will think that she is responsible for her sister's death and will be burned with guilt for the rest of her life. The main character of the novel will leave home when she grows up, and in order to atone for her sins, she will become Blake's maid. The protagonist thinks that, unlike the original, she did not die. Of course, the real Ansia is gone, but her sister doesn't know about it. The crown princess realized a good thing. Diana would not suffer from guilt for the rest of her days. The Count's daughter smiled and told her sister that she looked cool when she greeted everyone at the ball. Then she asked if everything was okay with her because she fell into the lake. His Highness's wife chuckled and replied that she was fine. Suddenly, Diana, as if remembering something, turned away from her relative and took something out of her pocket. The girl handed her friend a beautiful jewelry box and told her to take it. 
When Antia asked what it was, the little girl said that it was a fiery mana stone that maintained heat. If you hold it in your hands, it will become warmer. The Count's daughter, embarrassedly scratching the top of her head and smiling, admitted that she wanted to give it to her earlier, but winter was already over. She replied that everything was fine and she was already feeling better. Diana decided to warn her not to worry about her father because she bought the stone secretly. The blue-eyed blonde squeezed the stone in her sister's hand harder and said that she really wanted her gift to be accepted. The main character was delighted and thanked her relative, saying that she would definitely use it. Suddenly, tears appeared in Diana's eyes. When the heroine asked why she was crying, she replied that she was just glad that her gift was accepted. Ancha handed her exquisite scarf to her sister and asked her to wipe away her tears. But Diana, taking out her scarf, refused, saying that she could use hers, and her scarf was very beautiful, and she would be sorry to get it dirty. The girl asked the princess if the emperor gave her this scarf, to which she said, yes. Then the count's daughter said that his highness must like her, which made her very happy. The protagonist, noticing with what sincerity her friend smiled at her, thought that she turned out to be much prettier and sweeter than in the novel. Soon, the crown princess's carriage arrived at her native palace, the girl was glad that she had finally arrived home. But as soon as the young lady got out of the carriage, Blake immediately ran into her arms. The lady blushed and grinned. She told her husband that she had already returned. Then she asked his highness how he would evaluate her elegant appearance and behavior at the ball. The heir smiled happily and said that she was incredibly beautiful. The girl was so comforted by his answer that she did not hide her great joy. Sometime later, when the married couple was already going to bed, the boy asked Ansia if she had fun today. She said yes, but she was nervous. The young man then asked his wife if she had danced with the emperor, but the girl suddenly replied that she had not danced at all. His highness jumped up and asked excitedly why this happened, but the heroine calmly said that she wanted to have her first dance with him. Ansia happily said that the emperor understood her wish and showed respect. Blake worriedly squeezed the fabric of the blanket with his hand and asked why she didn't dance with Tenstion, since he himself couldn't go to such a place. When the lady asked why he replied that he was cursed, the protagonist gently placed her hand on her husband's hand and repeated to him what she had already said many times, he will definitely be cured. Ansia thinks that today she met the one who will remove the curse from her husband, and she is really very beautiful and sweet. The princess kindly raised the boy's hand and squeezed it, asking his highness to promise her something. She smilingly asked him to dance together when the moment came when he lifted the curse. He, without appeasing his anxiety, agreed, after which he asked in bewilderment who else he would dance with other than her. But suddenly he admitted to the girl that he was scared. She tried to calm him down, saying that his curse would be lifted. However, Blake tears flowing from his eyes said that he was sad not because of this, but because she would leave him and one day suddenly leave him. The heroine calmly said that she would not go anywhere, but the young man shuddered and excitedly asked his wife not to leave him. His Highness shouted to Ansi that there was only her for him and he would do whatever she wanted so long as she didn't leave him. The princess ran anxiously into Blake's arms, asking him to stop crying. He, unable to hold back the tears that flowed more and more from his eyes, asked his wife to promise that she would never leave him. At this moment, Antia thought that all she had to say was that she would stay with him forever, but she couldn't lie like usual. Still, he hugged the desperate guy and calmly said that he would not leave him. A few hours later, the heroine thinks that she promised Blake that she would not leave, but at the same time, she believes that she needs to prepare to say goodbye. She thinks this because the prince must fall in love with Diana, just like in the original story, and then his curse will break. Looking at the sleeping, tear-stained boy, the lady thinks that she wanted to help her husband recover from the shock of her suicide attempt. She wanted to protect him. While typing a letter with a pen, she reasons that if Richard, as in the original, wanted to make Diana his, she would interfere with him preventing them from meeting. The girl sighed tiredly because she really planned this, but now this plan is not destined to come true because Blake likes her more than she thinks. Having signed the letter, which turned out to be an invitation to visit Diana, Ansia decided that the time had come for her husband and sister to meet. A few days later, while staying with Blake in the corridor that leads to the street, the heroine tells her husband that her younger sister will arrive today. He, sternly frowning his eyebrows and straightening his shoulders like a soldier, told his wife that he understood her. The princess thought that she had heard him tell Hans about his new clothes, which turned out to be a smart white suit with blue accents. 
She asked the young man if he was worried, and he said that he was a little worried and only because his daughter-in-law would suddenly hate him. The lady straightened his collar, asking him not to worry. She realized that he was worried not about meeting his love, but from meeting his wife's relative. Ansia thought that maybe she was ahead of the curve, but it would be better if they met earlier than in the original than it would be too late. Soon the married couple went out into the garden where the Count's daughter's carriage had already arrived to greet the guest as expected. Diana, oddly enough, got out of the carriage and immediately rushed to hug her sister. The girl says that she was very happy when she found out that she wanted to see her and sent an invitation to her palace. The Count's daughter, hugging her sister and rubbing against her like a puppy, said that today she looked great, and every day she was getting better. She embarrassedly asked her to say hello to Blake first. The baby obeyed Ansia, and bowing politely greeted him. The boy also smiled and said that he was glad to meet her. The young lady then thanked his highness for inviting her to visit. At that moment, a certain romantic spark arose between them. A gentle smile appeared on the face of the main character who was watching them, and she thought that, as expected, they looked harmonious together. The princess told her friend that she would go away for a while to greet his majesty and asked her to wait here, to which she agreed. The girl turned to her husband and asked if he could show the palace to Diana at this time, and he happily said yes and let her leave it to him. When the young lady figured out what her friends would do while she was away, she finally left. Even though Ansia understands that she did everything that depended on her, namely brought Blake and Diana together, she still doesn't feel very good. The main character reading in her quiet library thought about what those two were doing now. Prince Blake is the heir to the curse, and Princess Diana is the heir to the power of light that can break the spell. The lady wondered if they were attracted to each other. The girl believes that despite the fact that she and Diana are sisters, there is no problem. She understands that even if she and the prince had a marriage of convenience, it can be annulled at any time without prior notification to the church. In this world, it is not uncommon for a marriage to pass to a brother or sister if it breaks up. This is possible because creating bonds between families is more important than people's loving feelings. Ancha clenched her fist anxiously and thought that regardless of the customs of this country, Blake would still need to divorce her for another girl. The princess grinned maliciously and frowned because as she thought this was annoying, although her husband even sang to her, he liked her so much. But the next moment, the heroine grabbed her head and asked herself to stop because she now looks like a capricious 10-year-old. The baby understands that the crown prince needs to become closer to Diana because it will be better for him. Staring at a page in a book about magic, the lady wondered if her sister was really the only one who could lift the curse and why she couldn't. After a while, walking along the corridor with books in her hands, the protagonist reflects on how much closer her husband and Diana have already become. But suddenly, she approaches a slightly open door from which the voices of his highness and her sister can be heard as if arguing about something. The princess immediately burst into the room where she actually saw her husband and Diana in a quarrel. She asked excitedly and perplexedly what happened. Although the boy noticed his wife suddenly appearing in the room, he continued to argue with the guest, saying that she was very mistaken. The Count's daughter, who was already blushing with anger, persistently asked the gentleman not to be so stubborn. Ansia, not understanding what had already happened during these two hours, asked the guys to calm down and take turns telling what happened. Diana stated that she loves her sister more than anyone, but Blake says that this is not true and he loves her more. The girl said that she was actually related to her, and the young man said that they were actually married. When Ansia realized that they were arguing because of her, she was overcome by a mountain of shame. She has no idea how it happened that the main characters of the novel swear so much. Diana told her rival that she had liked her sister since she was eight years old, but Blake angrily declared that it did not matter because he loved her more than anyone in the world. The protagonist smiled and sighed. The lady thought that, come to think of it, they were getting along quite well. A couple of hours passed and the kitchen began to fill with a very appetizing aroma. It turns out that a Korean dish is being cooked on the stove, a stew in which vegetables, tofu, cheese, mushrooms, and meat are stewed. This delicious dish is prepared by Antia. The girl brought a spoonful of the dish to her lips and tasted it. She liked the taste. Suddenly, Blake appears behind the main character, who, hugging his wife from behind, asked her if she still cooks Twenyanshige today. 
The girl smiled and said that she remembered how much he liked this dish from the first spoon. The boy admitted that her twin John Chige is the best food in the world. The lady reminded her husband that he needed to have lunch and go to fencing lessons. Time passed quickly, and the married couple had already arrived in the garden along with Diana and one maid to begin fencing training. Blake decided to continue the old song and irritably told his wife's sister that no one in the world loves Ansia more than him. But the Count's daughter again replied that this was not so, and she loved her more because they had blood ties. The matured protagonist, watching with a smile as her friends argue, thinks that two years have passed, but nothing has changed. The young master objected that they were, after all, a married couple, but the girl stuck her tongue out at him and said that they had never even kissed. His Highness instantly turned red as a tomato without saying a word out of shame. The crown princess laughed at her husband and thought that he looked like he was about to cry. The main character hugged her sister to brighten the situation and asked the children to stop arguing and start training. Then, the girl straightening Blake's collar gently said that it was time for him to start studying too. He agreed with her affectionately calling her his wife, which again angered Diana. Suddenly, she rushed to the side and decided to play a game with his highness, where the one who ran to the training place first won, after which she immediately announced that the competition had begun. The prince displeasedly asked why she started so abruptly and said that it was not fair. The boy ran after Diana, asking her to stop and start again, but she jokingly said that he was just having a delayed reaction. The crown princess, who had been watching them all this time, was surprised that they were competing without stopping. The maid, Melissa, smiled and told the lady that the two were getting along very well today. These words made Antia think, she also thinks that Blake, who looks like a little rabbit, and Diana like a little beagle, will make good friends. The maid thought that this was true, after which she admitted that she was glad that His Highness had such a good friend. A strong wind blew and blew the girl's hair. The main character thought that, as Melissa said, they look like friends but nothing more. The young lady suddenly thought that she felt relieved. The girl admits that she decided to be honest about her feelings. She doesn't want to go anywhere. She wants to stay together with her rabbit husband, who always smiles at her and rejoices at her successes. Anchia also wants to stay close to Mr. Tenstion, who has become an example of a father to her. And finally, the princess wants to be close to her cute little sister, who looks like a beagle. The baby understands that time spent with loved ones is very valuable, but she cannot be so greedy. Even though she has all this now, until Blake's curse is lifted, her happiness may be shattered into millions of pieces. But the girl decided that until her husband became an adult, she needed to find a way out. Otherwise, she would have to give up and leave them. Ansia said that she believed that she would definitely deliver His Highness from the curse so as not to lose him. After this, the young lady told Melissa that they needed to go to the emperor and the crown prince with which she agreed. And they went. Having met with Tenstian, the protagonist told him everything. The curse of his son can be lifted and the heir of the Belasian family is capable of this. Therefore, they just need to love each other. The gentleman listened carefully to his daughter-in-law, but it seemed that he did not believe her words. Later, Antia tried to explain to her husband that if an heir to the power of light appeared, he would need to marry her, but he refused. The girl's eyes bulged out of her head, and she reminded her husband that in order to lift his curse, he would have to do this. But the boy, calmly touching the princess's hand, said that as long as he could be near her, he did not care about some kind of curse. The lady was surprised by this, but he added that the main thing for him was that she was nearby and that was enough for him. Blake was further adamant. He thought only about his wife and not about solving his problem. This is how two years passed in the life of the main character. During this time, many changes took place in the Crown Prince's palace. The lake was filled in, and a greenhouse was erected in its place. They also made a training ground and a small field, on which, as Blake wanted Chinese cabbage, began to be grown. The Crown Prince's palace finally had servants, and they were all very good and loyal people. The protagonist, looking from the balcony at her field of Chinese cabbage, thinks what a good harvest they had this year. Also this year, the Crown Princess as a girl with a high position in the state was involved in all imperial affairs. Originally, this was supposed to be done by the Empress, but Tenstian had no intention of marrying again. He gave his daughter-in-law the Safia Palace and also allocated a room for an office on the third floor of the Imperial Palace. Everyone envied his boundless love for his daughter-in-law. But in fact, on the third floor of Tenstian Castle, there was more than just an office. 
A place was created there for secret research, which was carried out in order to find a way to lift Blake's curse. It was filled with history books in ancient languages and books about light magic curses. Richard will spread the rumor that in the ancient dark magic of the goddess, there is one trick that can transfer evil spells to another person. And Tenstion, deceived by him, will want to take the curse for himself for the sake of his son, but in the end, he will be killed. Arriving in her secret office and opening a mysterious book, the lady remembers that a thousand years ago there was a country called Jelkon, but it was destroyed by Philip, and in its place the Asteric Empire was founded, and the ancient language used in Jelkon was lost due to unknown circumstances, and even the clergy could not decipher it properly. The heroine remembers that in the original story, Richard uses this to deceive the Emperor, so she must prevent it. The girl understands that Duke Castle and Richard are hiding now, but when the time comes, they will definitely use this trick. She should keep her main weapon, because as soon as the latter finds out that she can read any language, he will begin to act differently. Because of this, Antia hides her knowledge, and as luck would have it at the same time, a secret room was created in the depths of the Imperial Palace in order to save Blake. The girl turned around to look at something and thought that nevertheless, there is no safer place than the Philian Palace where the Emperor lives. The young lady looked at the large lithographic print, which no one could find in the original but was found when the lake was filled in to build a greenhouse. She ran her fingers over the scrawled letters on which it was difficult to make out anything. Woman six all before was. The girl believes that an important clue is written on this stone, but due to severe wear and tear, it is not clear what is written. The young lady was calmly looking at the ancient artifact when suddenly the door to her secret room opened slightly. The protagonist was seriously scared, trembled, and turned towards the sound wondering who it could be. In the floor-lit room, an adult silhouette of a man with beautiful white hair and a luxurious suit appeared. As soon as Antia was able to find out what kind of sudden guest had come to her, she instantly stopped being afraid and smiled happily. It turned out to be Tenstion, who also smiled affectionately at her. The girl joyfully called out to him, calling him father. The crown princess laughed merrily and spoke to the gentleman and said that he still looks very good today. The compliment brought a smile to the man's face, but he replied that she was flattering him again. She declared that she was not lying and cited as proof that he was the first love of all society ladies. But the emperor asked who told her this fabrication, and the lady replied that everyone said so. While the king modestly straightened his hair, the girl thought that at first glance he seemed formidable but in fact he was just shy. A sly, smug smile stretched across Ansia's face, because she could draw such a conclusion, because she had known her father for many years. The gentleman asked his daughter-in-law if she had looked at the print, and she replied that she had then asked if he had come to look at it too. Tenstion admitted that he had come to look at her and asked why she did not come to him. The girl said that she thought he had an important guest. The Lord calmly closed his eyes and replied that he had no one more important than her. The little girl smiled because she understands that now he is sincere and speaks like a real father. The Emperor says that the curse of course needs to be lifted, but she also needs to rest. She asked him not to worry and said that she sometimes rests. Then the gentleman said that he knew that she never rested, and the lady admitted that she was so busy because she liked to do this business. The princess said that he needed to rest because he shouldn't be so overworked. She was so busy talking that she didn't notice the man's hand above her head. Tenstian, patting the girl on the head and smiling, asked her to stop grumbling. Ansia instantly pouted because he takes her concern for grumbling, but still agreed with him. At this time, interesting things are happening in the newly built training ground. Blake uses all the strength he has to repel the enemy's attack with a wooden sword. It turns out that he is practicing sword fighting with Diana, who is also trying to hit as hard as she can. At one point, suddenly the girl turns out to be more resilient than the young master and makes a jump in his direction, causing him to push back. But the crown prince does not miss the opportunity to strike with his sword and swings at his opponent, but not as hard as expected from him. In the end, the couple falls wearily onto the green grass, gasping for air. Diana and Blake were incredibly tired of training. The girl, still catching her breath, asked the boy why he wasn't giving it his all, and whether it was because she was a girl. He, sweating all over his face, replied that it was because she was Ansia's sister, and he did not want to harm her. In response, the little girl admitted that she also did not swing the sword much, because he was the husband of her beloved sister, and she also did not want to hurt him. 
The children spent several moments in silence, after which the prince decided to ask his friend why she decided to become a knight in the first place. She, looking thoughtfully at her hand, which she raised into the sky, replied that she wanted to become strong. The boy was slightly surprised by her words, and he asked why she needed to become stronger. Diana, frowning maliciously and resolutely clenching her raised hand into a fist, said that this is because she wants to protect her beloved Ansia. Blake admitted that he is glad that his wife has such a beautiful little sister. The girl added that now, unfortunately, she cannot do anything for her, but in the future, she will be able to protect her. Suddenly, the young master said something unexpected. He asks Diana to take care of Ansia if he dies. The Count's daughter was so outraged by this that she immediately jumped up and asked her friend what he was saying. She angrily asked him not to say anything stupid if he did not want to make her sister unhappy and leave her to live out her last days as a widow. The lady added that as Blake knew, Ansia loved him very much, and it was very impolite to talk about her death so easily. The girl angrily asked if he could imagine how sad she would be. The young master excitedly reminded her that he had one problem, namely a curse. She, blushing with rage, said that it would be removed and he should not talk about it anymore. She promises that she will never forgive him for these words. Diana asked her friend to work harder from now on to protect Ansia together, and he agreed, tilting his head thoughtfully. The Count's daughter, majestically raising her wooden sword upward, exclaimed that she was a knight, and this was her knightly promise. Blake raised his weapon and then decisively said that he too was making his promise. When evening came, Ansia going to bed with her husband thought that his sentence had not changed in two years. She doesn't know if it's because she met Diana early or because she wants to lift the curse instead, but in any case, the girl is happy about it. The heroine told her beloved that he must be tired, so she wished him good night. The lady wanted to gently pat her husband on the head, but he suddenly opened his eyes. She asked if she woke him up, then apologized, but he said no and that everything was fine. The young man hugged the princess's hand, smiled, and said that she was very warm and that he would not have bad dreams with Ansia. The girl asked if he had a nightmare, and he replied that he had, and then the lady asked what was there. The prince said that he forgot that dream as soon as he woke up, but he knows for sure that it was creepy and sad. But everything is fine with him, because his beloved wife is nearby. The heroine patted the boy on the shoulder and thought that he looked sleepy, and since he had training tomorrow, it was better for him to sleep. She laid the young man on the bed and again wished him sweet dreams, calling him her child. But Blake was so infuriated that he abruptly rose from bed and declared that he was no child. She shook her head in bewilderment and said that to her he still looked like a cute child. The crown prince's face at this moment looked as if his whole soul had fallen into his heels. He asked Ansia excitedly, Observing such a reaction from her husband, the protagonist understands that this, of course, is not what every man in the whole world wants to hear. She, again calling the young master, her baby hubby, asked him to go to bed, but he again capriciously exclaimed that he was no child. A grin appeared on Anzia's face, which indicated that she liked to mock her husband like this. She called him baby again, knowing that he didn't like it, but she didn't want to spoil him too much. However, noticing the downcast state of his highness, I thought that I had probably overdone it a little. A new sunny day has arrived, and Blake looking at the growth marks of Ansia Diana and himself, scratched into the tree sighs heavily. The young man is upset that he is lower than everyone else. He tiredly leaned against the tree and wondered when he would grow up. Then the crown princess appeared behind him, who cheerfully called him to the palace to eat. But the young master sadly shook his head and replied that he had no appetite. The girl asked in surprise why, when he said that no matter what he eats, he still doesn't grow. Ansia reminded him that he needs to eat more in order to grow. He said offendedly that he was doing this but was not growing, and the young lady encouraged him, assuring him that later he would definitely grow up. The heroine thought about what he must still be worried about yesterday's words. She recalls that the original did not describe his height. The protagonist recalls that Richard was 185 centimeters tall, and it was said about Blake that he was slightly shorter than him. It turns out it will be approximately 170. She, affectionately taking her husband by the hands, said that today she cooked the dishes again, then asked if he still wouldn't eat. Blake's eyes immediately sparkled like two diamonds, and he asked her admiringly. The boy said that in that case, he would of course join the meal, after which the couple went to the dining room. 
Ancia thought how cute her husband was. Evening has come, and Diana being at home is practicing swordsmanship, which she is doing very well. She stopped and stared at the sword and thought that her movements were still not so smooth, and Eden the trainer advised her to work on her left hand. Nevertheless, the girl returned to the fighting position to repeat everything again. But she fails to do this because behind her there is a certain scary man whom the little girl was so frightened of that she shuddered. It turned out to be her father. He irritably asked his daughter what she was doing. She quickly hiding the wooden sword behind her back as if nothing had happened, answered that nothing. Mr. Belasian, grabbing the child by the hand, began to shout that no matter how much he taught her to be smart, she still spits on it. And now she also picked up a sword because of which her hands would be calloused. The father clenched his jaw angrily, just at the thought that Ansha had ignored him and made him a laughingstock among the aristocrats. The man remembers the words of the Marquis about what is needed for his child to have an excellent education. Belasian understands that if Diana marries the Duke of Cassel, then all his shame will be washed away. He let go of the girl's hand and calmly said that if she had obeyed him, she would have been an excellent lady. The man's face suddenly darkened. He ordered his daughter to tell him everything that happened today in the Crown Prince's palace and to take the recording ball there. Fear completely consumed Diana and was reflected in her frozen eyes. She, trembling all over, asked what he was saying. Meanwhile, in the Crown Prince's palace, Blake was very surprised at what dishes his wife brought to the table. Among them were fragrant bread rice and bean soup. Grabbing the strange little sprout with his chopsticks, the young man asked Ansia what it was. He is disgusted by this sprout because it looks like a monster. The lady guessed that he meant those one-eyed creatures living in the Valley of Chaos. The little girl explained that the soup was made from soybean sprouts that she had grown herself. She added that the emperor found them in the eastern state of Chan. The young lady explained that round beans grow in such long shoots, and if he eats them, he will grow very tall. The prince prepares himself mentally before tasting this plant. The only thing that cheers him up is that this will make him taller. Only when he closed his eyes was he able to stuff the bean sprout into his mouth and chew it. When Ansia asked how it tasted, his highness replied that in the end, it tasted like hair. It really tickled the tongue, not sweet and not salty. The girl said that this is his charm. While Blake was eating beans, the protagonist thought that he was eating well and didn't even spit out anything which made her very happy. Mrs. Belasian grinned and asked her husband to taste the soup too. He listened to her advice and touching a spoon of soup with his lips was ready to feel a very disgusting taste. But surprisingly, he really liked the dish. The young cook asked if he really liked it that much, to which he happily said yes. Ankia explained to the joyful boy that soybean sprouts contain many nutrients, so he should not just drink soup but eat everything. Meanwhile, Diana walking along the dark corridor of her house cannot find a place for herself because something is very bothering her. She boldly moved on thinking that she could not do what her father ordered her. Night came very quickly in the kingdom. A bright round moon rose above the palace of Count Belasian. The Count, looking at the magic recording ball that his daughter returned to him, asked why she brought it back to him. She calmly replied that she did this because it turned out to be broken. The man asked menacingly if there were any suspicious movements in the crown prince's palace, and the girl replied that there was no. He then asked if Blake's curse had spread even more on his skin, and the little girl modestly admitted that she didn't know. Suddenly, the father jumped up from his chair and shouted to his daughter that a marriage had been announced today between the eldest son of the duke and the daughter of the Marquis of Weston. He furiously asked the child what she had been doing all this time. Belasian tells the poor girl that she is not as beautiful and smart as Antia, and she is also not so capable as to be the center of attention of the aristocrats. The man asked if it was really so difficult for her to listen to her dad at least once, but the girl continued to look at him fearfully and remained silent. Suddenly, the father noticed a wooden knight's sword that was lying not far from him. He furiously grabbed the weapon and asked Diana how long he would stick around and why she hadn't thrown it away yet. The girl rushed to take the ball from her dad, asking him to return it to her, because for her, it was a precious thing that her older sister gave her. The Count grabbed the young lady's hand and ordered her to look at her hands, asking how a high-ranking girl could have a hand covered in calluses. He angrily asked who would marry such a bride who could not even take care of her hands. Diana realizes that he is saying this because he is worried about her, and also because he is angry that her value in the wedding market will fall. But then the Count hears something that surprises him, his daughter says that she is not going to get married and wants to become a knight. 
The young lady decided that she was not an accessory for her father to look good, so she boldly told him that she wanted to become a knight, and next year she wants to enter the knight academy. He asked what kind of nonsense she was talking about wanting to become a girl knight. He believes that this is the dream of a lower-class noble or commoner. The little girl clenched her fist angrily and said that this was just a biased opinion, and Countess Shannon, the third commander of the knights, was also a woman. Count Belazian shook his head mockingly and said that the countess was just an old maid. But the girl said that she would still become an imperial knight and would protect her sister. She asked her father not to force her to do anything strange anymore. Suddenly, a loud slap was heard, and Diana's cheek turned red from the blow. The little girl quietly and perplexedly called out to her father. The heroine told her beloved that he must be tired, so she wished him good night. The lady wanted to gently pat her husband on the head, but he suddenly opened his eyes. She asked if she woke him up, then apologized, but he said no and that everything was fine. The young man hugged the princess's hand, smiled, and said that she was very warm and that he would not have bad dreams with Ansia. The girl asked if he had a nightmare, and he replied that he had, and then the lady asked what was there. The prince said that he forgot that dream as soon as he woke up, but he knows for sure that it was creepy and sad. But everything is fine with him, because his beloved wife is nearby. The heroine patted the boy on the shoulder and thought that he looked sleepy, and since he had training tomorrow, it was better for him to sleep. She laid the young man on the bed and again wished him sweet dreams, calling him her child. But Blake was so infuriated that he abruptly rose from bed and declared that he was no child. She shook her head in bewilderment and said that to her he still looked like a cute child. The crown prince's face at this moment looked as if his whole soul had fallen into his heels. He asked Ansia excitedly, Observing such a reaction from her husband, the protagonist understands that this, of course, is not what every man in the whole world wants to hear. She, again calling the young master, her baby hubby, asked him to go to bed, but he again capriciously exclaimed that he was no child. A grin appeared on Anzia's face, which indicated that she liked to mock her husband like this. She called him baby again, knowing that he didn't like it, but she didn't want to spoil him too much. However, noticing the downcast state of his highness, I thought that I had probably overdone it a little. A new sunny day has arrived, and Blake looking at the growth marks of Ansia Diana and himself, scratched into the tree sighs heavily. The young man is upset that he is lower than everyone else. He tiredly leaned against the tree and wondered when he would grow up. Then the crown princess appeared behind him, who cheerfully called him to the palace to eat. But the young master sadly shook his head and replied that he had no appetite. The girl asked in surprise why, when he said that no matter what he eats, he still doesn't grow. Ansia reminded him that he needs to eat more in order to grow. He said offendedly that he was doing this but was not growing, and the young lady encouraged him, assuring him that later he would definitely grow up. The heroine thought about what he must still be worried about yesterday's words. She recalls that the original did not describe his height. The protagonist recalls that Richard was 185 centimeters tall, and it was said about Blake that he was slightly shorter than him. It turns out it will be approximately 170. She, affectionately taking her husband by the hands, said that today she cooked the dishes again, then asked if he still wouldn't eat. Blake's eyes immediately sparkled like two diamonds, and he asked her admiringly. The boy said that in that case, he would of course join the meal, after which the couple went to the dining room. Ansia thought how cute her husband was. Evening has come, and Diana being at home is practicing swordsmanship, which she is doing very well. She stopped and stared at the sword and thought that her movements were still not so smooth, and Eden the trainer advised her to work on her left hand. Nevertheless, the girl returned to the fighting position to repeat everything again. But she fails to do this because behind her there is a certain scary man whom the little girl was so frightened of that she shuddered. It turned out to be her father. He irritably asked his daughter what she was doing. She quickly hiding the wooden sword behind her back as if nothing had happened, answered that nothing. Mr. Belasian grabbing the child by the hand, began to shout that no matter how much he taught her to be smart, she still spits on it. And now she also picked up a sword because of which her hands would be calloused. The father clenched his jaw angrily, just at the thought that Ansha had ignored him and made him a laughingstock among the aristocrats. The man remembers the words of the Marquis about what is needed for his child to have an excellent education. Belasian understands that if Diana marries the Duke of Cassel, then all his shame will be washed away. 
He let go of the girl's hand and calmly said that if she had obeyed him, she would have been an excellent lady. The man's face suddenly darkened. He ordered his daughter to tell him everything that happened today in the Crown Prince's palace and to take the recording ball there. Fear completely consumed Diana and was reflected in her frozen eyes. She, trembling all over, asked what he was saying. Meanwhile, in the Crown Prince's palace, Blake was very surprised at what dishes his wife brought to the table. Among them were fragrant bread rice and bean soup. Grabbing the strange little sprout with his chopsticks, the young man asked Ansia what it was. He is disgusted by this sprout because it looks like a monster. The lady guessed that he meant those one-eyed creatures living in the Valley of Chaos. The little girl explained that the soup was made from soybean sprouts that she had grown herself. She added that the emperor found them in the eastern state of Chan. The young lady explained that round beans grow in such long shoots, and if he eats them, he will grow very tall. The prince prepares himself mentally before tasting this plant. The only thing that cheers him up is that this will make him taller. Only when he closed his eyes was he able to stuff the bean sprout into his mouth and chew it. When Ansia asked how it tasted, his highness replied that in the end, it tasted like hair. It really tickled the tongue, not sweet and not salty. The girl said that this is his charm. While Blake was eating beans, the protagonist thought that he was eating well and didn't even spit out anything which made her very happy. Mrs. Belasian grinned and asked her husband to taste the soup too. He listened to her advice and touching a spoon of soup with his lips was ready to feel a very disgusting taste. But surprisingly, he really liked the dish. The young cook asked if he really liked it that much, to which he happily said yes. Antia explained to the joyful boy that soybean sprouts contain many nutrients, so he should not just drink soup but eat everything. Meanwhile, Diana walking along the dark corridor of her house cannot find a place for herself, because something is very bothering her. She boldly moved on thinking that she could not do what her father ordered her. Night came very quickly in the kingdom. A bright round moon rose above the palace of Count Belasian. The Count, looking at the magic recording ball that his daughter returned to him, asked why she brought it back to him. She calmly replied that she did this because it turned out to be broken. The man asked menacingly if there were any suspicious movements in the Crown Prince's palace, and the girl replied that there was no. He then asked if Blake's curse had spread even more on his skin, and the little girl modestly admitted that she didn't know. Suddenly, the father jumped up from his chair and shouted to his daughter that a marriage had been announced today between the eldest son of the Duke and the daughter of the Marquis of Weston. He furiously asked the child what she had been doing all this time. Belasian tells the poor girl that she is not as beautiful and smart as Antia, and she is also not so capable as to be the center of attention of the aristocrats. The man asked if it was really so difficult for her to listen to her dad at least once, but the girl continued to look at him fearfully and remained silent. Suddenly, the father noticed a wooden knight's sword that was lying not far from him. He furiously grabbed the weapon and asked Diana how long he would stick around and why she hadn't thrown it away yet. The girl rushed to take the ball from her dad, asking him to return it to her because for her, it was a precious thing that her older sister gave her. The Count grabbed the young lady's hand and ordered her to look at her hands, asking how a high-ranking girl could have a hand covered in calluses. He angrily asked who would marry such a bride who could not even take care of her hands. Diana realizes that he is saying this because he is worried about her, and also because he is angry that her value in the wedding market will fall. But then the Count hears something that surprises him. His daughter says that she is not going to get married and wants to become a knight. The young lady decided that she was not an accessory for her father to look good, so she boldly told him that she wanted to become a knight, and next year she wants to enter the knight academy. He asked what kind of nonsense she was talking about wanting to become a girl knight. He believes that this is the dream of a lower-class noble or commoner. The little girl clenched her fist angrily and said that this was just a biased opinion, and Countess Shannon, the third commander of the knights, was also a woman. Count Belasian shook his head mockingly and said that the countess was just an old maid. But the girl said that she would still become an imperial knight and would protect her sister. She asked her father not to force her to do anything strange anymore. Suddenly, a loud slap was heard, and Diana's cheek turned red from the blow. The little girl quietly and perplexedly called out to her father. 